please have everything working. Whoa. I forgot. I I changed things. Um let's fix that. <laughs> there we go. Hello everyone, base of here. Welcome to a Monday stream. Uh everything is broken because the uh, internets have been having issues. Uh and we saw them really bad this past week. So I gave the my uh ISP a call. They did a factory reset on the modem and all sorts of other stuff and it blew up obviously everything in my house that was connected to it um but also my lights and stuff uh were connected and so when i fired up stream they weren't turning on i was like okay we'll turn them on and they didn't show up in my little app so i had to uh promptly try to get them attached it looks like they're working they're probably not attached to my stream deck anymore so I got to go check that out because I, I didn't see that light change um, when I changed scenes. So we'll see what happens. But my friends, we're going to be playing a game called Corpse Factory. This was gifted to us by a dear friend, Yeti. Um, I don't really know much about it. Uh, he said he played a little bit and uh, it's it's a, a story. I think it's kind of like a visual novel. Um, so I don't know anything really about it. Uh, Hey, let's, I guess. Audio delay. Oh, skip mode. Oh, nice. Oh, this is nice. I like speeds. Oh, tell me I got that bug. I did, and it was a mosquito. Fuck you. No bloods for you, you stinking vampire. Anyways, I don't know anything about this, but I like the art. The art looks cool. Also, it looks like my... Oh, oh no. my camera might actually yeah. turn off at some point. I just realized. Because I had to close the stinking software. So you guys let me know. What's up, Space? Welcome to the stream. Friday, June 12th. Morning. I know those bitches... Wow. Coming in uh, hot. I know those bitches have been talking about me behind my back. Uh, auto. Oh, can I play this? With this and just push buttons? And not have to do anything? That sounds kind of nice. They flash those fake smiles when I walk past. They wave half-heartedly and say things like, Oh, hi, Amy. And you're only the only one brave enough to pull off that look. Wow, that's that's rude. <laughs> Should I be doing voices? I don't know, maybe. I, I'm guessing there's going to be too many people to do voices. They're all two-faced lying assholes. I hate each and every one of them. Wow. Starting hard. Amano, Sachiko, Kurosawa. Just look at them. Everything about them is fake. Fake lips, fake nails, fake smiles, fake personalities. Look, I'll be first to admit that I'm a fake bitch too. But even I know I'm not as bad as them. I'm not horrible to every person I meet, just the ones I don't like. Ugh, it's not fair. I have to work with them. I just wanted to be a, I just wanted a part-time job, something breezy and casual. How was I supposed to know these delinquents would obsess over tormenting me? Amano is unbearable, but probably the least terrible of the three. She's a year younger than me and acts like she's some famous pop idol. But she's a dropout, just like me, working in the dead-end part-time job just so her parents don't kick her out of the house. She spends her evenings singing at underground bars at Hant with shady talent agents who swear they can promote her and make her to the next big pop star. She gets taken advantage of time and time again, but never seems to learn her lesson. I don't know if she's just stupid or if she really thinks she's on the right track to becoming famous. That sucks. Sajiko is the kind of straight-laced girl who's... Why is girl purple? Straight least girl you say at every school, setting her ass off to earn her parents' approval. The type of girl that always has the best grades, but never really has any friends. She's the kind of girl that graduates, then realizes, then the reality of the world knocks her on her ass, and she realizes, whoops, I, I, did, I missed that. Oh, that's cool. Then the reality of the world realizes, or knocks her on her ass, she realizes she actually has no clue what she's doing. Just like the rest of us. So she has settled for the first crappy job she can find, and then suddenly it's three years later and she can't and she's still slaving away for asshole managers just to make ends meet. Instead of being humbled by her station in life, Sichiko decides to take her anger out on everyone around her. I've seen her slap customers out of frustration. You know what? I stand for that. If the they're bitch ass customers, slap them. Oh, that hides. Okay. Rumor has it that she strangled her boss on one occasion. Apparently, she's too afraid to fire her. I don't blame him. I'm afraid of her, too. 
And then there's Kurosawa. I could write an entire blog about all the things I hate about her. She's pretty, but she's very aware of it. She seems to have a new sugar daddy every few weeks. Some poor old fool that she strings along in milk tray. Good for her. She must be nearly 30, but all her friends are still in senior high school. That's weird. It's more than a little weird. Yep, yep, see. They hang out around the train station bullying homeless people and shoplifting from the convenience store. I'm pretty certain that she's done time once or twice. Kurosawa is all... It's just an all-around terrible person. She makes Amano and Shichiko look like saints in comparison. Honestly, I couldn't ask for a worse group of co-workers. Finally, there's me. Is that me on the right, or is that, was that all three of the girls? Emi Katsuno. University dropout, part-time cashier, and up to my ears in debt. I live in a small apartment in a bad neighborhood just to keep my head above water. My apartment building is filled with deadbeats, loan sharks, junkies, perverts, you name it. What the fuck? What's with the weird ass colors? Why is name orange? Am I supposed to... Does that mean anything? That's gotta mean something, right? By some miracle, I ma managed to snatch up the best apartment in, in the worst building. Although the place is nice, the rent is questionably low. I'm fully expecting the landlord to wander in one day and demand more money or murder me. I'm constantly worried about money. Worried about my safety. Worried about what the hell I'm supposed to be doing with my life. As if that wasn't bad enough, I have to work four days a week with the three worst girls I've ever met in my life. What's with the colors, dude? Am I missing something? Today's no different from any other day. Amano greets me at the door, her disgustingly puffy and pouty lips pulled back in a half snarl, half smile. I can smell the sickly sweat scent of too much lip gloss from ten feet away. Oh, hi, Emmy. You're late again, you know. Ah, oh, there we go. I don't have the voice act. Hopefully. Bitch. Yeah, sorry. Just let me pass. Oh, that's me. Wow, I'm hot. Whatever. Kurosawa wants to see you. Can you, like, just go see her? Fine. I like her happy pain with the blood splatter. Amano walks off. I look around for Kurosawa. The stale scent of cigarette smoke eventually overwhelms the lingering scent of lip gloss in the air and leads me to her location. You wanted me? Hello. Katsuno. I need you to process a big refund. Don't mess it up, okay? It's for a regular customer. Okay, I can do that. What am I refunding? There's a bunch of shirts on the counter. Just ring them up and refund them for cash. You can leave the money in the envelope under the register. That's sketchy as fuck. Fine, I'll take care of it. Thanks. I'm going for a smoke break. I decided to clock in before processing the refund. I won't be paid for this shift as... The company doesn't know I came into work. I go behind the counter and retrieve the sign-in booklet. I flip today's date and fill in my details. Done and done. The shirts that Kurosawa mentioned are lying haphazardly over the counter. I pick them up and scan each one. They're not cheap. The first rings up at 11,000 yen. Oh, 11,000 yen. The next is 15,000, 13,000. That's still not cheap. There are six shirts all... There are six shirts all up each one a little more expensive than the last they don't look worn and the tags are intact i'm supposed to ask for a receipt or proof of purchase before making a refund but the customer is obviously not here yes yeah, see that's what's sketchy wait what do you do space you just ask yeti yeah i the colors are messing with me dude why like i can understand maybe girls highlighting for a reason that coming in the future but name name all bold and orange i'm confused Besides, the request came directly from Kurosawa, my superior, so I can't exactly refuse. Absolutely, you can. The re refund goes through the system successfully, and the cash drawer opens up. I count out the correct amount of money in 10,000 yen bills, then pop an elastic band around the cash and put it in an envelope. I also print a copy. Why is copy red and bold? Copy of the refund receipt and slip it in with the cash. I'm so confused. Job done. I slide the envelope back under the register and lean against the counter. Surveying the store, I can see that there aren't any customers around. It's still early morning. In the morning, after all. We don't usually get much business around un until around lunchtime. Is the music... Is the audio okay? It's really loud in my ears, but it's like barely registering an OBS. I hover around the register for a while, biting my nails and staring at the clock to pass time. Kurosawa eventually returns from her smoke break. Half an hour must have passed by now. Who does she think she is? You finished that refund? Yeah, I did it just like you said. Okay. She rummages around underneath the cash register and pulls out the envelope stuffed with cash. Her fingers flick through it quickly, counting each note, and she nods as though satisfied. Good work, Katsuno. 
I'll pass this on to the customer next time they come in. Mm, sketchy. No problem. Anyway, I'll take over the cash register for a while. You want to go tidy up stock? She's going to blame me for stealing money. Yeah, okay. Because I touched it. I'm not too bothered if Carsaw wants to take over my register duties. It's boring standing around. I'd much rather be doing something than nothing. As I head toward a rack of untidy jackets. Ooh, sorry, I apologize. Sashiko bumps into me. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Whoa, you were stoned out of your gourd. Sorry. Did she actually just apologize to someone? Sachiku the customer abuser? <laughs> That's fine. You okay? I haven't been sleeping real well. I'm just tired. That's all. Rest, I guess. You can hear it okay? Cool, thank you. Thanks. Look, while I've got you here, I know I haven't really been easy to get along with lately. I've got my own personal issues, but that's no reason to take it out on you and the other girls. So you can hear them better. It didn't sound like it changed the music at all, did it? I can't believe what I'm hearing here. Sachiko has had a change of heart. So I'm resigning as of today. I don't deserve this job. I wanted to apologize and make sure there was no bad blood between us. Ugh. Neck needs to pop and it's not popping. Sachiko, I don't know what to say. I never expected this from you. I wonder, maybe I should just put myself there, right? Because that's me. I'm Emmy. Yeah. If you're resigning, do you have another job lined up? See, nailed it. Perfect. No, not yet, but I need to work on myself first. I have a lot to think about. Well, I mean, as long as you're sure about this. I am. In that case, then thank you for apologizing. I forgive you. Thank you, Emmy. Well, until next time then. Yeah. Until next time. Sachiku takes your leave. I'm still a bit taken aback by her sudden personality change. Did I misjudge her from the start? Probably. No, that can't be it. She has a history of abusing customers and co-workers. No way I imagine all that. Regardless, I'm actually kind of glad she's trying to get a grip on her life. I hope everything works out for her. If she's resigning today, then I suppose the only two terrible co-workers left are Amano and Kurosawa. I glance at Amano, she is, who is standing by the door, waiting to greet customers. She has a vacant expression on her face, like always. I then look toward the register where Kurosawa should have been standing, but she's not there. Didn't she offer to take over the register duties for me? Where the hell did she disappear to? I wonder behind the counter. The register doesn't seem to look like it's been touched. Out of curiosity, I slide my hand around the register, and the cash up envelope was gone. No sign of it. The receipt for, from the refund is lying on the floor. I bend down and pick it up. It's a standard refund receipt, stating the value of the transaction. My name is signed at the bottom since I was the one who processed it. Told you! I called it! The refunded money is gone, and so is Kurosawa. Did she? No, she couldn't have. Surely she wouldn't have run off with the money. No one would be stupid enough to risk their job over that, would they? It, she's risking your job. Uh, your name's on it. You should go ask her about it. Huh? Kurosawa still, is still here? She seemed to pop up, pop up from nowhere. Tatsuno, a word, if you please. Oh, shit. She already tattled! Ah, Hirota, the manager of the store. He normally spends his time in the office out back, so it's kind of unusual to see him here. What could he want with me? Kurosawa was tending to the register when she noticed the system flagged a large refund as suspicious. What a bitch. Do you know anything about it? Yeah, she told me to do it. Oh, yeah. I processed a big refund this morning. Is that so? Do you have the receipt? Uh, here. I hand him the transaction or transaction receipt that is still between my fingers. He looks it over once, then twice, his eyebrows furrowing. This is quite a large refund. No wonder the system flagged it. Did you get approval from Kurosawa before processing this? Uh-huh. Kurosawa was the one who asked me to process it, sir. I never even spoke to the customer that it was intended for. That's not true, Hirota. I don't know anything about this refund. Fuck you, bitch! Wait, what? 
What? Where is the refunded money now? Well, I, I put it in an envelope underneath the register, but... There's no money here, sir. <laughs> She's lying to you. Oh, you're getting stabbed. I'm stabbing you. Interesting. You're becoming my own personal stab stick. And Katsuno, you're the one who signed off for the refund. That makes you responsible. Watch, he's in on it. Yeah, I did sign it, but... You're going to have to tell the truth, Katsuno. Did you take the money? Don't make me get the police involved. No, get the police involved. Wait, hang on. Do you think I stole it? Kurosawa asked me to process the refund and leave the cash in an envelope. Nonsense. That's simply irresponsible. It's not safe to leave cash out of the register. Yeah, why am I so stupid? But... I feel my stomach begin to sink. What exactly is happening here? Confess at once, Katsuno. You're in on it, aren't you? I didn't steal the damn money. If anyone stole it, it was that bitch Kurosawa. <laughs> You're getting stabbed. Enough. Can I stab people in this game? We're not going to stand here and argue about this like bickering school children. Oh, just you wait. I'm stabbing. Hello. Like a serpent sinking out of the shadows, Sachiko slides beside Hirota. Yeah, Sirita? Did you witness Katsuno take an envelope of cash from the register? No! Oh, yes, sir. No! She acted like she was processing a refund, then pocketed the cash. All these bitches! I to bring it to your attention sooner, but... Oh, you're all getting stabbed. How do- how do I stab? What's- what's the button for stab? Sachiko, that bitch, she hasn't changed at all. She just sold me out. I managed to catch a glimpse of Kurosawa smirking at Sachiko. They nod in unison and giggle. Are they in this together? Are they throwing me under the bus just so they can steal some cash? I can't believe it. I'm so freaking angry. There you have it. A witness to your crime. Kurosawa, if you would kindly call the police. Yes, sir. Wait just a minute! Oh, you're so stabbed. I scream louder than intended, but my blood is boiling. I can barely control myself. I didn't steal any money. Why don't you check the security cameras, huh? You'll see that I'm innocent. Oh, you know those cameras haven't worked in months, right? I suppose nowadays they're mostly just for show. Oh, that's interesting that you happen to know that. Of course. If Hirota really wants me to, I could go double check it just to be sure. Though, I think that would just be a waste of no, time. No, go fucking check, bro. Thank you, but that won't be no You're in on it! Kurosawa. You piece of garbage! Oh, I'm s this game's got me so angry. Kurosawa's eyes narrow as she gazes at me wickedly. Amano, please show everybody what you found. You got it, boss. Oh. I'm so angry right now. I'm not even... This isn't even real life, but I'm, like, furious. Yeah, I'm having mean girl flashbacks. I've never seen that. I didn't even realize Amano was part of this discussion. She's leering at me disgustingly and slapping an envelope against her open palm. Found this wad of cash in Katsuno's locker out back. I can feel the blood drain from my face. I haven't even been out the back today. Are they all in, in this against me? Did they plant evidence to get me in trouble? Lying! I haven't even had time to go out back today. Oh, dude. I mean, what do you want me to say? You think the cash just appeared out of nowhere? It would seem Running fingerprints on the goddamn envelope. Since we located the money, I won't have you arrested. But you will not step foot in this store ever again. Do I make myself clear? Fine. Fuck these bitches, but... Excuse me, run. Fingerprints on the envelope. Fired. And I will make sure you never work in any of our stores again. Ass monkey. I'm speechless. I can't even process my thoughts. I'm pretty sure he's in on it. The quiet giggling and sinking of Kurosawa, Sachiko, and Amano buzzes my ears until my skin skull feels like it's going to burst. Aroda grabs my shoulder and tries to lead me outside, but I jerk away and stumble backward. My back slams into a glass window at the front of the store. Thankfully, the glass doesn't shatter, but I can immediately feel a bruise forming. I push myself forward to regain my balance and duck toward the sliding door. See you around, Emmy. <gasps> oh, well. I guess oh, <laughs> please let me stab her. I blink tears out of my eyes as I dash through the store's front door. My anger and fear and anxiety get the better of me and it's a good five or ten minutes before I realize that I've been running aimlessly through the shopping mall. 
I reach a hand to my eyes. I reach a hand to my eyes to wipe away the moisture and take a deep breath. I look around trying to get my bearings. The escalators, at least I know where I am. I need to sit down and compose myself. If I don't calm down, I might be tempted to return to the store and start punching those three absolute assholes. Um, is there a sporting goods store? I'm pretty sure we could find a nice bat. With my head... Oh man, I'm gonna get on a list. With my head down, I blindly charge toward a small seating area. I collide headfirst with somebody in front of me. Without thinking, I scream out of anger. Watch where you're going! I'm sorry. No, it's my fault. Oh, please don't be mean. Wait, this girl, I know her from somewhere. Hatsuna, is that you? She knows me. Huh? I know you. Have we met? Yes, of course. We graduated oh, she's from sweet. senior high school together. Please Did don't be mean. Met? You seem sweet. Did we? Especially after those assholes we just dealt with. You know, it's like that. That, com that pendulum swing where like she could probably just be like a normal sweet right now or a normal person right now but she feels clear on the gentle sweet side of things because those pure agony of those bitches are like just passed yeah, words English you, you guys got it senior high school was more than a year ago feels like a different lifetime how does she expect me to remember that a year ago Yeah, you're Sato, right? Aoi Sato? Aoi is blue. That's me. Welcome back. Your steadfast hey, hey. loyalty is greatly you beautiful bean! Whoop, so long, N N N G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G G Thank you so much for the 33 months! Yeah, yeah! I miss Cookie! Nice, can't even see. Hey, come here! Eh. Come here! Come get him this cookie! He's like looking for it because I've just been throwing it at her lately. Come here! Here you go! Here you go! It's right here. Here you go! I always, always think I put a cookie. She got all sorts of... I don't know if... I, I would normally call it pampered, but... She didn't like it. She got, she got her nails clippied and buffed. And her pads all soothed up, and her teeth brushed, and her ears cleaned, and now she's passing out again. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was exhausting getting up for those two seconds to get that treat. How you doing, Pancake? How's you and the new kitten? Well, kinda. Sorry. I've had a crappy day. I just got fired, so I'm not thinking straight. You got fired? I'm really sorry. Um... You bumped into me pretty hard. Are you hurt? I'm fine. Owie's rubbing her arm tenderly. I figure I must have injured her, but I'm really not in the mood to stand here and apologize to some old acquaintance. That's mean of me. I have to go. Excuse me. Oh, um, okay. No, I feel bad. I'm an asshole too. Ah, I was right. My camera would turn off. Called it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. For once, I caught it before you guys said anything. Come on. We did it. We're back. I push past Owie. Unexpectedly, the shy and spineless girl grabs my arm and stops me from leaving. Her grip is surprisingly strong. Katsuno? that you just got fired is that true yes wait yeah i'm pissed off about it tell me what happened are you gonna give me a new job why are you so interested i just thought maybe i could help us all she's so nice whatever you can help some bitch set me up she stole a bunch of money and made me take the fall uh, i see are we done here can i leave now sorry for keeping you oh I like Owie. Yeah, okay. Owie has an Owie because I ran into her. Once again, I turn to leave, but Owie's next words managed to catch my interest. You know, if someone got you fired, there is a way you could get revenge. You got money for the sporting goods store? 
Revenge? What is this girl on about? Does she have some way for me to get back to Kurosawa? What am I thinking? I can't even set foot back in this store. My chance to get any kind of justice doesn't exist. Revenge? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, hell no. You're not going cold on me now. Tell me what you meant. Yeah, we're, we're taking him out. Oh, okay. But let's talk quietly. I swear I turned down the freaking... The music volume and it's still stinking loud. See, like, it's registering quieter now, but when I exit, it resets. I don't know. We'll play with it. There may be a way for you to get back at whoever got you. And the audio or the music cut out. That's uh, that's never a good sign. Have you heard the rumors of Corpse Girl's website? What's with the purple words? What's up, Brewster? How you doing, my dude? Welcome to the stream! Stream boss is here. Everyone say hello! Hey! That's banging tune. How you doing, my dude? Whoops. Welcome to the stream. I'm surprised you haven't started the DVD dating scene. I don't own it yet. That's what that um thing above is. That's the sub goal to play it. Corp Corpse Girl's website. Corpse Girl? Who is that? Sounds like also, the stream deck actually worked. For the overlay. Oops. Oh shit, I'm skipping everything. You visit Corpse right. Girl's website. You can request a death. If, if you mouse wheel, it's cat or passes through this stuff so i gotta catch up on this but um i don't know if i was actually fo i had to been focused on the game because uh the controller was working i don't know maybe obs stuff is working finally uh corpse girl who does that sounds like some death metal band how he ignores my comment and continues on with her speech they say if you visit corpse girls corpse girls website you can request a death it sounds good to me What's the death? What is this girl ranting about? Hang on, start over. I'm I'm completely lost. Owie frowns, a look of annoyance on her face. Say somebody wrongs you and you want to get revenge on them. Go on. Rumors state that you can visit Corpse Girl's website and fill out a form in order to request a specific person's death. This Corpse Girl. Is she like Hitman or something? Okay, as much as I wanted to beat the shit out of those girls, now it's getting creepy. Like, I don't think I'd follow through on it. <laughs> no one knows the truth. All I know is that her victims always receive a photo of their own corpse before they die. See, now photo is blue and bold. Corpse is purple. Also, the the stream boss lights never reset. Now they're they're fine. They get a photo of the their death. That's creepy. been wanting to use the website for some time there's somebody somebody that i'd be happier without but i'm not brave enough to go through with it yeah on the off chance it happens oof. still want to know if the rumors are true if you use the <laughs> you could tell me that's so works. jacked up you do it this whole thing sounds sketchy risky are the police gonna come get me if i go on this website I... I've got no idea. Well, thanks, I guess. Aoi doesn't make a further attempt to stop me when I turn on my heel and walk away. I don't know what to make of her suggestion. Can such a website even exist? The ability to request a death it just sounds so unbelievable. And yet... I'm gonna polish it, my old slugger. I found myself unable to get the possibilities out of my mind as I make my way towards the train station. Corpse Girl, a website tailored for revenge. I could daub in Kurosawa. Or daub? Is daub is a word? I could daub in Kurosawa Sachiko Amano. 
If I could remain anonymous, then no matter what happens, whatever fate befalls those girls, it couldn't be traced back to me. I start to wonder if ordering the deaths of a few girls simply because they got me fired is a little extreme. Probably, but they're kind of bitchin'. I mean, bitches. No, bitches, binge, binge, bingin'? Bitchin' is a good thing. Bitches, depending on context, is not. Although, they're not exactly saints. They're closer to human garbage more than anything else. To the bin! They've always been hostile toward me. I'd probably be doing the world a favor if I had them all killed. That's dark. If they screwed me over without a second thought, who knows what they might do to their next unsuspecting victim. See, this is just justification complex and what happened with Light Yagami and his assholery brain in a superiority complex. Yeah, killing all three of them is the right thing to do. Removing them from the planet will pre prevent them from hurting anyone else. Yeah, yeah, we're fully... We're going, we're full on committing, apparently. You have to say hi before work. Appreciate popping in, my dude. Have a good night at work. Be safe. Hopefully it's uh, not too stressful. My heart begins to race. The trip back to my apartment is boring. The train carriage is nearly empty, save for a few junior high school boys and a couple of women in business attire. Why? I must not be putting something together. I have a few seats all to myself, so I scroll out and check my phone for messages. When I feel confident that no one is in the carriage, in the carriage is watching me, I decide to search for a corpse girl's website on my phone. I don't exactly, I don't exactly know how easy it will be to find. Maybe I should have asked Owie for the address. Well, a quick search shouldn't be too hard. I begin to type. Corpse girl's website. I feel results pop up on my screen, but none seem, none seem relevant. There are links to funeral services and anime fan sites, but nothing really matches what I'm looking for. Maybe this was a bad idea. I should probably delete my search history. That doesn't help. Maybe just one more search. Corpse girl bequest uh death. My phone seems to lag for a few seconds as the search is submitted. Then a fresh list of links appear. The top results catch my eye immediately. This must be it. I click the link and the website loads immediately. It took over my phone. That was scary. Oh, you're gorgeous. I'm not worried at all. The website is simple. There's a freaky little dancing girl at the top of the screen who looks too happy to belong on such a site. Corpse girl's website request revenge at your fingertips. Request a death. Fill out your victim's information and uplo upload a photo of them. Your victim will receive a photo of their own corpse shortly before they die. Watch out, don't be needed in- Wow, that's fucked. The whole site is really basic. A small blurb of text offers instructions- Request to death. Fill out your victim's information and upload a photo of them. Why do I have the death note musical song that Light sings in my head now? I don't remember the musical song that Light sings. But yeah, yeah, this is very death note even with the, the photo. Your victim will receive a photo of their own corpse shortly before they die. That would be creepy. Watch out. Don't be an idiot and enter your own information or you will be cursed. What the hell? Is this site actually for real? I start to wonder if I should go through with this. There's very little useful information on this site. It's like someone got, actually got a hold of the death note after the death note transpired. <laughs> And just made it a a death note thing. Or like just under the cover covers death note. Just made it through a website. I mean it does say request a death, but come on, is someone actually gonna go out and kill the person I choose? And how on earth can someone receive a photo of their own corpse before they're actually dead? That just doesn't make any sense. That part's different. My heart suddenly skips a beat and I nearly drop my phone when it buzzes at me. Oh, thank God. It's just a text message. An unknown number. That's never a good thing. Wait a minute. There's a photo attachment. Who would be sending me, me, me a photo from an unknown number? My curiosity gets the better of me and I open the message. Oh! Dude, that's all the evidence I need right now. I don't need to set... I don't need to murder them. I literally take this to the police. They're like, look, fucking bitch. Literally just sent this to me. That's all it takes. I saw you fucking bitch freaking bitch whatever 
I knew it. I knew she set me up and Amano and Sachiko were on it too. They made me process a fake refund to get cash out of the register so that my name would be on the transaction. And all for what? A bit of cash to have to split three ways. I called it though, dude. I called it. She's an idiot. She literally gave me evidence. Burp. Excuse me. You. you don't need to I'll kill you. now you just laugh and say you're a fucking you literally text back laugh my ass off you're a fucking moron i'm heading to the police station a few of the junior high school boards nearby look at me with worried expressions but i don't give a damn i'm angry i'm furious kurosawa is going to pay i closed kurosawa's message and returned to corpse girl's website it's clear what has to be done i'm going to request kurosawa's death I read the webs I read the website's instructions one more time to make sure I haven't missed anything important. Enter the victim's phone number. Upload a photo of the victim. I have to upload their phone number? Oh, right, because then they get a photo of them. <laughs> Alright, I think I might have a screw loose because I'm laughing hysterically like this is actually gonna happen. I can't believe it. Kurosawa just signed her own death sentence. She sent me a photo of herself and her phone number was included with the message wow i just believe in this i fill in the phone number and upload the photo my hands trembling the whole time my thumb hovers over the submit button i feel a chill down my spine my face turns pale and i immediately feel cold and clammy is kurosawa really going to die if i use this website or is this all a sick hoax i read through the possible outcomes in my head first possibility nothing happens and kurosawa is none the wiser and I just take it to the police. Second possibility, Kurosawa gets pranked by wh whoever is running this website. Maybe the administrator gets kicked from tormenting people. Kurosawa might just receive some spam texts or something like that. Third possibility, Kurosawa dies. She gets murdered or some elaborate scheme is concocted to make her die accidentally. My lips curl into a frenzied smile. I like the third possibility the most. I think I'm losing my mind. I'm not a good person. I slam my thumb down and smash the submit button. Ha, smash. Prepare for the end, Kurosawa. I'm not a good person. Even if they screwed me over. When I get home, I can barely contain my nervousness. Come on. Here we go. I'm shaking as the door, as I open the door to my apartment. Holy crap, the more I talk, the more I have to yawn. It's obnoxious. By the time I walk through the door, the sun has just started to set behind the backdrop of the city. Even though it's not dark yet, I'm feeling physically and mentally drained. The drama at work this morning, the taunting laugh of Kurosawa, I feel exhausted. Just or like I just want to crawl into bed and sleep. Same. Despite my... Dipping energy levels, I can't extinguish the burning question flickering within my mind like a candle flame. Look at my nice little plants. Also, my clock has no hands. How do I know what time it is? How will I know when when or if Kurosawa is dead? Will Corpse, Corpse Girl's website notify me? No, of course not. I didn't give any of my personal information to the site. The entire thing was anonymous, except for... No, it's not anonymous. It's not like I can visit the store tomorrow and see if she comes into work. I'll be kicked out as soon as I show my face. So what do I do? Uh, that's it. Noise. <laughs> I whip my phone out. My person open noise. A so Why is that? Why is that bold and colored? A special network act that all my coworkers are connected to. Curse all of Sanjiko Amano and our I are all in this group chat labeled work life. We use the chat to swap shifts with each other and complain about the boss. Just as, I was, just as I was hoping, I haven't been kicked out of the group yet. I swipe through the list of chat members and tap on Kurosawa's profile. Last online one hour ago. Perfect. If I use this app, I can keep an eye on when Kurosawa is active. Fuck you, webcam thing. She, she only has to be using her phone for noise to detect that she's online. She doesn't necessarily have to be using noise itself. That's creepy. It's the best way I can think of to monitor if she's still alive or not. I will do that for now at least. Ooh. I wonder why Kurosawa sent me a photo of herself via a regular text message instead of through noise. 
Doesn't matter, she's an idiot. Maybe she thought she'd be busted for it if someone got into her noise profile. It doesn't matter. I she sent a proof. That's she's an idiot, regardless. Who knows what that girl was thinking? Regardless, I'm thankful she made such a stupid mistake. Yep. I wouldn't have obtained her phone number if she had all if she had decided to message me through noise. Instead, after all, noise is strictly on an online service. No need for phone numbers. Come to think of it, where did she get my phone number from? Well, no matter, it worked out in the end. I slumped down on the couch in front of the TV and keep my phone firmly gripped in one hand, my knuckles whitening. I started to bite my bite the fingernails on my other hand out of anxiety. In an attempt to distract myself, I switched to the TV on and streamed some stupid reality shows. The distraction hardly works, and I find myself instinctively glancing at my phone every couple minutes, waiting for any said stupid. Holy crap, are you so sorry? Waiting for any kind of update on Kurosawa's online status. The evening passes slowly. The website didn't say how fast they die, right? Saturday morning. I like the little the stuffed animal next to the bear. Suddenly, it streams through the open curtains, and I startle. I fell asleep on the couch. Did I fall asleep on the couch? I wipe my mouth with my sleeve, cleaning off a trickle of drool from my chin. My phone is still in one hand, and I quickly check it. I tap the fingerprint screen the screen, but it's not responding. The battery died. I must have fallen asleep and left the screen on all, all night. I race towards my charger and plug it in, anxiously waiting for enough energy to turn the phone screen back on. Man, I am not okay. After what seems like an eternity, the phone comes to life. I catch a glimpse of the clock as I swipe the lock screen away. Away, 6.34 a.m. I open up noise as quickly as I can and flick through the cur flick through the Kurosawa's profile. Huh? This profile is private. You are not connected to this person. Damn it! She blocked me. I frantically navigate to the group chat, only to find that I've been kicked out. Damn it! Damn it! What can I do now? I got no way of knowing whether Kurosawa is still alive. I'm not okay. I slam my phone down in frustration, and it vibrates in retaliation. Huh? I blink a couple times. Who would be texting me at this hour? It might be Kurosawa again, trying to rub my face in their victory. Well, if that's the case, at least I would know that she's still alive. I hesitantly pick up my phone again and open the message. There's no text, just a photo attachment. Oh, shit! That's me. Also, wasn't there reference to stay away from any windows? Did that happen in this game, or am I having a deja vu moment? Because that's creepy as fuck. Oh, that makes my heart beat. What the hell is this? I nearly dropped my phone in terror. A photo of a dead body, twisted, crumpled like it has fallen from a great height. A spatter of blood is flecked across the grass. It's hard to make out the details of the person. Dirty blonde hair, familiar clothes, smudged makeup. It looks like it's me. This, this dead body, is it supposed to be me? There can be no mistaking it. Without a doubt, this is a picture of my own corpse. I shriek again, unable to process what I'm seeing. I'm so entranced by that battered corpse that it takes me a minute to notice the timestamp in the corner of the photo. That's in an hour! It's today's date, but something is off. The time says 7.28 a.m. That's about an hour from now. I shiver involuntarily and feel the sickening sensation of bile rising my throat. This photo. Is this a prediction of my death? Who? Am I going to die within the hour? And then the truth hits me harder than my face hit the ground in this grisly photo. When you request a death on Corpse Girl's website, your victim also your victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Before they die. Yeah, of course. Why, what's the point of them receiving a picture after they die? It doesn't make sense. I can't look at it anymore. I throw my phone to the side and curl up on the floor. Did Corpse Girl send this to me? And how? How did somebody get a photo of my corpse? Fuck you, utility. God damn it. Uh, how did somebody get a photo of my corpse? A photo that is seemingly from the future. It's impossible. It has to be a hoax. Some trick. Some psycho tormenting me. Yeah, that's all it is. Someone is messing with me. Probably Kurosawa. 
I get up off the floor and stumble around. I'm kind of lightheaded and unbalanced, and my stomach feels queasy. Ready to launch its contents through my throat at any second. I blindly reach around for my phone, finally grasp it with the near frozen fingers. The phone number that sent me the photo. It's an unknown number, but the digits don't match the number that Kurosawa texted me from yesterday. So it's unlikely that it came from her. And bizarrely, the phone number is <gasps> kind of weird. There are more digits than sh should be possible. I try to count them, but stumble a few times in confusion. Yeah, someone spoofing numbers. It was the nice, gentle girl, isn't it? She's the, she's the corpse girl harbinger. I eventually conclude the number has 18 digits. Way too many. In addition, the phone number seems to repeat digits a lot. 666-33-666-22-666-44-666. Hmm. It seems too strange to be real. Is it possible to fake a phone number? Uh-huh. Something interesting catches my attention. Even though the caller ID doesn't recognize the number, it has data on the origin of the number. Tokyo, Japan, my very own city. Perhaps the center of the photo can mask their number, but can't hide their location. This gives me an idea and decide to go to the get to the bottom of the situation despite my head throbbing and my stomach plating to be emptied. emptied. Yeah, you have an hour to figure it out. I punch the phone number into a search engine along with the keyword Tokyo. One result. The link points to a popular discussion boy board, Noise Channel. It's an anonymous board where users can talk about almost anything. And no big surprise, it's owned and operated by the very same company by the, behind the Noise app I use on my phone. I tap the link and get taken to the discussion topic from less than a week ago. I quickly read through it. Topic strange photo from unknown number. Hey, so today I got a strange gore photo from a number I don't have in my contacts. This is from Kurosawa. Not sure what the deal is. It was gross though. Wondering if any hackers can trace the number or something. Same number. Seems like Tokyo area. I'm in Osaka. Hey, thanks in advance. The topic has only one reply. You got this too? Was the gore photo a picture of yourself? I'm worried. Received... Yeah. Oh, this is Kurosawa. Received a similar pic from the same number. Thinking about contacting the police, not sure if I'm overreacting. And that's it. The end of the discussion. Neither poster followed up on the conversation. Because they died at it. That's all? That didn't give me anything to go on, except now I know at least two other people have received bloody photos of themselves. I wonder if those photos were extreme, as extreme as the one I re received. They said it was gory. What happened to those these two posters? I almost said porn stars for some reason. <laughs> Why didn't they continue the discussion? Because they did. Put it together. I feel myself beginning to sweat. My body is going from cold to hot and back again several times a minute. I feel... Like I have a fever. What am I, a reptile? I, I know it's just stress tearing me up. I check the time. It's 6.59 a.m. What would you do until it, with a half hour left to go, chat? About a half hour until the time printed on the photo. That scared me. I take a deep breath and the doorbell buzzes. I freeze in place, unsure whether I should answer the door. I wouldn't. In the sketchy apartment building, it's a risk to answer the door on any given day before even taking into consideration that some psycho just texted me a photo of my own corpse. I tiptoed toward the door on stiff legs and gazed through the peephole. There's no one there. I hate it. I breathe a sigh of relief. What is it, My Michael Myers? Maybe I'm just on edge and the doorbell echoed from someone else's apartment. No, that was loud. Besides, I don't know of anyone who would visit me unannounced, especially this early in the morning. Murderers! Murderers do that! Come on! I slumped to the floor, my back sliding down the door as I come to rest on the carpet, my legs splayed out haphazardly in front of me. I've had enough fear for one day. I have to just believe this whole thing is a hoax. It's probably karma for trying to get revenge on Kurosawa. Yeah, that's it. Karma. This is, this is like a combination of Death Note and that Black Mirror episode with the bees. The doorbell rings again and I scream in shock. My head slamming back against the door I was re it was rest I was resting against I jumped to my feet and ignored the people this time simply swinging the door wide open why this fucking camera utility you need to stop you're obnoxious a gust of chilly morning air sweeps into my apartment and I shut my eyes tightly against the sun cold why shut your eyes bro a messy hair tangled in the wind and obscures my vision when I open my eyes Quickly, I sweep the hair to my face and look around. There's no one here except... 
metal trolley is blocking the walkway in front of my door. A dark white bag about the size of a human body rests atop the trolley. Oh, this is creepy. They deliver you the body? My heart begins to race as I immediately recognize what this is. On TV, they always show what tr these trolleys use in morgues to car cart dead people's dead bodies around. Dead bodies. The vomit that has been trying to escape my body all morning finally finds its way out of my mouth. I retch and heave in the doorway until nothing is left inside my belly except the stinging stomach acid that threatens to burn through its fleshy container. Can anyone else see this? The stench wafting from the trolley is overwhelming. Pinching my nostrils closed does little more than trap the horrific odor inside my, my own skull and I gag and sputter or splutter involuntarily. My hand reaches forward and though controlled by some as though controlled by some being other than myself. I can't pull it back and I can't prevent my fingers from grasping the zipper tag attached to the front of the body bag. I unzip the bag. That's fucking creepy, dude. Also, why am I so tiny? And there I am, a wretched corpse exposed to the day's first rays of sunlight. I'm like missing my legs or I'm folded up like a pretzel. I stand here in the doorway as I lay there atop the trolley, simultaneously alive and dead, but more dead than alive in both bodies. The bruising on my face is horrific and I reach a stiff finger to my own lips, my living lips, tracing the outline of the bruise I see before me. There's no pain where the bruise should be and I breathe a sigh of relief, for why would there be any pain if I'm already dead? To feel pain would be absurd and then I would, and then I would really have to start worrying. I wonder how I died, did I fall from a great height? Did somebody hit me with the car, or did I collapse from some internal reason? Perhaps from organ failure or some undiagnosed sickness? Maybe I didn't die and the corpse in front of me is alive, living and breathing just as I do while standing in front of myself. Maybe this is all a prank I pulled out. I pulled on myself, dying just as a joke, but never really dying. Always living until the point I actually die and it's no longer a prank. That makes no sense. How can you prank yourself and not know it? My head is splitting. I can't think straight. All the thoughts in my mind are jumbled, the meaning behind unspoken words, disappearing be behind foggy walls or clouds inside my shattered skull. To clear my head, I step around my corpse and stand by the walkway's railing. That's how you die! Check the time! I'm on the fourth floor of the apartment building. There are two floors above me, so I can go higher if I wish, but I'm pretty sure a leap from here would be enough to render my living body identical to that of the corpse on the trolley. At this point in time, there exist two versions of Emei Katsuno. One is living and is me, and the other is dead, but is also me. I can choose now to be alive and dead, or be dead and dead, but I cannot choose to be alive and alive. So, even if I choose to be alive and dead, I'll still only be half alive. What? I am so confused. But choosing dead and dead is nice and clean, absolute and indisputably solid state of existence. I grip the cool steel handrail and lean over the walkway, my hair whipping against my face thanks to the relentless wind. Four stories below me is, this, is a small courtyard paved with concrete and decorated with the occasional shrub or flower bed. I missed the concrete by about two feet. What the fuck was the thinking there? Is anyone else as confused as, as I am right now? What was my thinking there? It's better to be dead dead than alive and dead? Oh, cookie time. I don't like this. Daddy, one of cookies. <laughs> What's up, Yuri? Welcome to the stream. How you doing, my dude? We're very confused. Dirt sprays up into the air as my nose is crushed under my own body weight. What the fuck, dude? I think about the photo Kurosawa sent me with her smug smile and her hands full of stolen money. I'm still alive. My teeth grind into my tongue and sever it. Ah, oh, but it doesn't manage to escape my closed mouth. Wait, maybe I threw the body. My mind wanders and settles on the corpse girl's website. What was all that about anyway? As far as I know, nothing happened when I submitted Kurosawa's details. Aha, uh -huh, maybe Kurosawa found the website as well and submitted my details first. Welcome that scared back. the shit out of me, Yuri. Your steadfast loyalty is greatly appreciated. Just back from work. Interesting day. Fewer strokes than last shift seems good. Holy crap, dude. Well, I'm glad there was fewer strokes. Dang it, my new cookies. Cookies for you. Boop. <laughs> Just bounce it off her neck. She'll get it. Thank you so much for the reset, my dude. I appreciate the heck out of you. I hope uh, you were able to get some nice 
relaxing time tonight. You've had some uh, crazy shifts last couple weeks. I guess Corpse Goal got me. Well played, Kurosawa. I think I can taste blood in my mouth, but it might just be a memory from some other point in my life. My lifetime. A, blink a blinking light from a nearby parked car kind of irritates me. But then my vision turns black or blue, and my only concern is how I'll never truly know what. What the fuck, dude? She decided on her own to kill herself because she got a corpse that looked like her. That was the prologue. I'm so confused. A few weeks earlier. Don't make me feel bad for these bitches. I've always liked the shape of my eyes. I can be critical about other parts of my body, but I'll never complain about my eyes. I like the stripe in your hair. With or without makeup, I think they look great. Mother used to tell me I inherited her, inherited her eyes. My big sister inherited father's eyes. To be honest, I don't see any of father's feature in myself or my sister, but I do agree that my eyes are exact a replica of mother's. Mother doesn't see too well anymore, and that might be something I have to also worry about in the, in the future. But for now, my eyes are perfect and I couldn't be happier with them. You're going to lose your eyes. I wear eyeshadow and eyeliner to bring out my best features. Some people tell me I use too much makeup, that I tend to overdo it and make myself look intimidating. Well, I don't really care. I mostly like the way I look, and honestly, how many people can claim the same? Today's morning ritual is the same as any other workday. I'm a slave to the wage and I'm not proud of it. Call me a corporate sellout, but I can't survive without money. My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. The shower is running by 6.05 and I'm dry and dressed by 6.15. I skip breakfast because I'm watching my figure and spend until 6.30 working on my makeup. I'm out of my cramped shoebox apartment by 6.45. Sometimes I catch my neighbors returning home from his overnight shift and if so, I exchange simple pleasantries with him and continue on my way. Today, there's no sign of my neighbor, so I don't slow down as I descend the stairs and exit the building. Excuse me. Hitting the convenience store for a can of coffee saps another few minutes from each day. I prefer sweet, sweet milk coffees because, but every now and then I'm in the mood for rich black cloth coffee. Regardless, I never start the day without it. I don't always need the energy boost, but it helps to stop my stomach growling. It's milk coffee kind of day, so I pay for my favorite brand and get out of the store in no time. The canned coffee dives into my handbag as I continue on my way. The train station is always busy in the morning and it's usually a struggle to navigate my way to the correct platform in time for the 7.12 a.m. train. Today is no different. However, I always make it in on time because my routine has been perfected over the last few months. I board the train down for Shinjuku, or yeah, Shinjuku. A cursory glance reveals there are no empty seats, so I push through the throng of bodies and stand against the carriage wall. Whenever there are seats available, I like to sit and read. It's much more common to have. I like to sit and read, but it's much more common to have to stand and stare at my phone screen like almost everyone else. When I do read, I read the classics. Stoker, Lovecraft, Poe. Horror, Western horror. At that, it's my favorite genre. And of course, faithful translations into Japanese are as good as it gets. My English isn't nearly strong enough to read these novels in their original language. If I'm stuck staring at my phone screen, I like to stalk people online. Acquaintances or the few friends I have lead such boring lives. They post about the most mundane topics all day, every day, acting like they'll shrivel up, shrivel up and die unless they get the attention they seek. I find their dull, tedious lies simply fascinating. From behind the safety of a glass veil, I can fulfill my voyeuristic fetishes and consume as much pointless information as I desire. Knowing every mundane tidbit of people's daily lives turns me on. Okay, I'm gonna read chat. I was out of the city, so it was a huge improvement. Nice! The city blew up with accidents and everything. Really? Was it just a horrible Monday? Jeez. Is that just a weird translation thing, or does she actually get her rocks off from learning about boring people's lives? 
This morning's the same as any other. I stare down at the phone held in my frail hand. My fingers move of their own accord, scrolling and tapping as the backlit display, pausing, pondering, pouncing on any post picture that my pupils haven't yet consumed. Standing in the train carriage, packed to the gills with people, I can't help but feel my face getting flushed and my steamy breath escaping my lips. I digest post after post, photo after photo, memorizing the coming, comings and going of every single person on my noise activity feed. I catch my breath, getting heavier, my gas, gas becoming short and sharp. Okay, she does get turned on. It was not a mistranslation, but this is fucking weird. Ray went to the dentist yesterday for a root canal. Mizuno shared some photos from her international vacation. Kawahara objects. Objects to owning pets and thinks all animals should be free. My cheeks glow crimson. There's a new color, but it's green. My chest begins rising and falling quickly. I clutch the collar of my shirt, knuckles whitening, knees shaking. A few people in the carriage start to move away from me, but I barely notice them. My fingers keep scrolling and I hit the jackpot. A new post from a coworker at my office. Tomoe Watanabe. She's a gal girl. What the fuck? What's a gal girl? The type with a heavy fake tan, bleached blonde hair, and questionable clothes. I hate her, but I love her posts. This morning's update reads. Tomomo. 53 minutes ago. Just found this corpse girl website. Such fake bull. Ha ha. Waiting to meet a bitch to try it on. Tomoe just discovered corpse girl's website, huh? I feel a slight squeal escape trying to escape from my throat as my legs tighten to buckle underneath me. I can't take the excitement anymore and I have to force my phone from my hands and bury it in the bottom of my handbag. Deep breaths, Noriko. Deep breaths. Also, was was this... This is Noriko Kurosawa, right? Is that other Kurosawa's sister or something? I need to calm down and control myself. Composure is key. I close my eyes and let a cool breath of air whistle through my slightly parted lips. Feeling, feeling a little calmer and no longer ready to explode, I analyze the information I just read. Tomoe wants to try out Corpse Girl's website. That's good. That's very, very good. Rumor has it that you can visit the website and request the death of somebody you know. How, and if the victim dies, isn't known to the public. Because of that, some people are pretty quick to dismiss the site as a hoax. However, the most interesting part isn't how or if the victim dies, but rather what victims... What happens to the victim before they die? Supposedly, the victim will receive a photo of their own corpse. How this photo exists before the victim's life is snuffed out isn't public knowledge. But the thought of the phenomena occurring is utterly intriguing. Nevertheless, the site has been gaining popularity lately, at least in certain corners of the internet. Message boards like Noe's Channel and other similar sites have been picked up on, have picked up on the rumors and like to exaggerate the website's authenticity. I tried to click on the the highlighted or the bolded word to see if it do anything. Nothing. The fact that someone like Tomoe, a rather dense, dim-witted individual, has discovered the website means that it's actually more well-known than I previously had thought. It means that people are actually take, talking about it outside of the internet. Chances are good that Tomoe will want to try it out and request the death of someone in the office, a co-worker. Me, perhaps. She hates my guts as much as I hate hers. Are you... Are you, uh, is she going to get turned on by the thought of her getting murdered? Finally, something exciting is going to happen in our dull workplace. The next station is Shinjuku. The doors on the right side will open. Please change here for the Chuo line, the Shonan Shinjuku line, the Saikyo line. As the automated announcement reads through the list of connecting train lines, I get ready to disembark. The train pulls to a stop and I contort my body around the other passengers in an attempt to exit the train. Finally free of the tangled mess of flesh, I hasten my pace and navigate through the labyrinthian station. I take the exit closest to my office and settle in for a slower walk. I'm on time, I never desire to reach the office any earlier than needed. It doesn't take long for the looming office tower to enter my field of vision. 32 stories of office space all crammed into one sleek slim tower. The name, Temujin, is stamped across the structure in gigantic block letters. If you're looking for this building in Shin Shinjuku, you can't possibly miss it. Why is name bolded? That, that has to have some significance. Or is it just a fuck with me? 
Imujin carries the title of Japan's third biggest banking corporation. It's a gigantic company with enough other branches in Kyoto, Osaka, Sapporo, Fuku, Fukuoka, I don't know that one, and a, dozen small, and a dozen smaller cities I don't even remember. I've worked here for close to three months now. It's not a long time it, in the grand scheme of things. That, sh that said, I'm only a temp and all I do is data entry. I work on the 14th floor along with about 60 other junior employees, including gal girl Tomoe Watanabe. I don't speak to many of my co-workers. That's the way I like it. When I reach the building, I enter through the giant double sliding doors and find myself in the familiar lobby. Comfortable couches line the wall, circling a reception desk. Four large elevators are tucked away in the nook behind the reception desk. It's already busy this morning, though to be fair, this place is packed all the time. I avoid the crowds of sharply dressed business people, feeling a little out of place in the semi-formal shirt and skirt. Ducking into a newly opened elevator, I tap my employee ID card to a backlit panel and press the button for my floor. The doors close and the elevator begins its smooth ascent. I'm surprised to find that I'm the only one traveling up. I reach my floor and listen to the soothing chime as the door is open, revealing the open layout office behind me, before me. The static drone of workplace noise fills my ears. Noise is emphasized there and it's not regarding the app. I swear there's just keywords from uh, the game that just automatically is just in a list of like, if it's this word, replace it. Conversation, ringing phones, fingertips tapping against keyboards, photocopiers. Why is photocopiers? Is it because photo is in the word? Even the steady low hum of the air condition contributes to the overall din. I make my way to my desk, stationed in the middle of the floor and surrounded by a dozen other identical desks. As I walk, somebody taps me on my shoulder gently. Good morning, Kurosawa. How's it going, dude? As Shinya Fujikawa, my senior, though he's really only a couple of months older than me. He's worked here for a whole year after taking an internship straight, up, straight out of senior high school. He's not an intern anymore, though. I'm not sure of his job title. Morning, Fujikawa. I like my air, hair stripe. I have red eyes. That's awesome. How was your commute this morning? Fine. Same as usual. That's good to hear. I, um... Did you read any of your... novels? He's referring to the horror books I like to read. I can tell from his tone that he doesn't exactly approve of the subject matter. Doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? I've known Shinya since junior high. We go way back, but I wouldn't exactly call us friends. However, he is the one that landed me this job, even though it's just a temporary contract. I've always had the feeling that he's a bit... He's a bit sweet on me. I could be way off the mark, though. Well, I couldn't get a seat on the train today. Too hard to read while standing. Ah... That's a shame. Um, you, uh, still haven't accepted my, uh, friend request, did you know? <laughs> oh, he's got a stammer. I, I, she doesn't owe you a friend request acceptance, my dude. Sorry. I have to fight the urge to roll my eyes. He's a nice guy, TM, but we were connected on noise once before and I had to delete him. He's super obsessed with my father's detective work and all he ever posts about is his assumptions and theories on petty crime cases. Okay, that could get obnoxious. Look at the elephant plants in the background. Normally I'd find any one of my friends list fascinating, but here's the thing. Shinya never posts about his personal life. All he writes are long-winded rants on boring cases. It's far beyond the amount of dullness even I can stand. I fish my phone out of my handbag and pretend that I'm looking at noise. Oh, how about that? Looks like I don't have any incoming friend requests. I quickly dip my phone back in my da bag. How peculiar. Well, I'll try and nudge again later. Sure, no problem. Well, anyway, I better get to it. Work hard today, okay? You got it. If I hide this... Oh, I, I was going to see if I could skip and if there's voice acting, I could hide it. Shinya offers a formal bow and goes on his way. Before I take a step towards my desk, a mocking voice whispers in my ear. How 
long are you going to lead on sweet little Shinya? You are a lot to take in. You have your name on a necklace. And you have, like, bubble gum in your hair. Although I do like your hair spade. That's pretty sweet. I shiver and find Tomoe and Watanabe work lurking behind, right behind me, buzzing around my neck like an irritating mosquito. That poor boy really has the hots for you. When are you gonna tell him you're a cold-hearted psycho? Oh, oh god, she has valley girl accent. Listen, I'm not leading him on, and I'm no psycho. Uh, you might be a Noriko. Huh, sounds like something okay, a you real psycho Okay, you're not a psycho, types, but you, you, you already got me questioning things about you. Of course, it's none other than than gal girl Tomoe, the very same brain dead moron who posted this morning about wanting to try Corpse Girl's website. She's the kind of person that likes to stir up trouble and instigate conflict. She's had her vacant eyes on me since the day I first stepped in the foot in the office. She loves to torment me any chance she gets. Maybe I rubbed her the wrong way somehow. Though I'm not sure what I ever did to her. We're cut we look almost identical or exact opposites. Look how flashy he she is and look how emo slash goth I am. Although, I'm gonna get a lot of trouble for, say, emo slash goth, since they're technically very different. Even though she's a data entry temp just like me, she's worked here just a little longer than I have. Unfortunately, that means I have to defer to her as my superior in this professional environment. She knows as much and likes to take advantage of the fact as often as it's possible. Funny, you know. He don't look like the type of skank to lead on a goody-goody like Shinya. Fuck you. I told you, I'm not leading him on. Well, if you're not interested, maybe I'll take him out this weekend and tongue him at the cinema. You do you, boo. <sighs> Gross. Do what you want, but I doubt he's into someone with your, uh, ah. looks. <laughs> oh, yeah. What would you know? You think he likes your flat chest, little Miss Gothic Lolita? Yeah, see, goth. There you go. I know I should shrug off comments such as this, and normally I would, but backing down from Tomoe isn't something I can do easily. I'll give you a tip. Guys like Shinya are smart. Clever. If you want to impress him, don't let him know your head is as full of air as your inflatable breasts. <laughs> Goodbye! That's what I do. A flash of crimson. See? Why is crimson green? That drives me nuts. Lights up Tomoe's face and she looks ready to lash out at me. A group of co-workers, juniors like us, look over to us in concern. Tomoe takes a step back from me, but not before signaling a rude gesture with her fingers. We ain't done here, Noriko. Watch your back. Me, 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 me. Get out of here. I'm trembling. Tomoe walks away and I breathe a sigh of relief. If it wasn't for having to deal with her, I wouldn't dread coming to work every day. Anyway, I wonder when she's planning to test out Corpse Girl's website. Will she try it on me since... He just fought. It, I think I have some sort of a, a fetish for the thought of someone wanting me dead. There's this. This is very weird. I'm not really sure if I should be excited or scared. Either way, it will definitely be fun to find out what happens if she does try the website. On the off chance that it's real, then you're fucked. I finally reached my desk to take note of the time. I was supposed to start working five minutes ago, so I quickly log in my computer to check today's task list. It's all standard stuff today. I need to transfer a few tables of numbers from a spreadsheet into a company's online database. When I'm done, I have to run it by a few other people and then commit the changes to the server. The work is dull and repetitive, but my salary isn't bad. On the plus side, I get to wear headphones and listen to music while I work. I dip into my handbag and retrieve my headphones, my phone, a can, a can of milk coffee, and a handful of breast mitts. <laughs> I thought it said breasts. Duh. I lay them all out on my desk neatly. I slip my headphones on, plug them into my phone, and hit play on my work playlist. Loud symphonic metal lovely, lovingly thrashes my ears as I crack open the can of coffee and take a long sip. Okay, let's get started. <gasps> Pancake! Thank you so much for contributing! I just put that up today. I return home to my quiet, cramped apartment after work. The place is eerily silent, a stark contrast to the bustling office where I spend my days. Throwing my handbag onto the tiny coffee table, I picked up my laptop and sit on the couch. I lie back and get comfortable, letting the laptop rest on my stomach as it boots up. The welcome screen loads up, so I click a couple of times, open my web browser, and then head to a very specific website saved in my favorites. Yeesh, that's in my favorites? 
A cute dancing zombie girl is animated at the top of the page. A peculiar, a peculiar irregularity that always makes me giggle. I noticed that the page view counter at the bottom of the site is nearly the same as it was yesterday. There have been maybe four or five new visitors. I heave a sigh. Maybe the website isn't quite that well known. After all. Or after all. That begs the question. How did Tomoe discover it? Well, never mind that. My eyes scan the website's content. Request of death. Big bold letters headline the site. The intention couldn't be clearer. Further information on the site is sparse. Brief instructions tell the user to fill in the victim's phone number and upload a photo. Aside from that, there's not much else to mention. It doesn't, e it doesn't even ask for a name. After scanning the site, I move my mouse to the browser's address bar and click. I type a forward slash after the website's address and then add the word admin. Hey, I, I know some basic HTML stuff to get me places. That's not HTML. Navigation. I hit the enter key. A login page it presents itself with empty username and password fields are waiting to be filled in. Yeah, yeah see? Squid. Name is in that, so it calendar. includes user in front of it with orange. What's up, Birch? Welcome to the stream. I'm... Dude, you're missing some weird death note kind of weird stuff happening. Hopefully you can catch up, because maybe you can help fill some stuff in, because I'm lost. My fingertips, or my fingers tap dance around the keyboard, and within moments I present with a brand new page. A blinking slab of text greets me. One new request. That scared me. A crooked smile cracks my stony expression. Finally, somebody has requested a death. I knew it. I'm the leader of Corpse Girl. Somebody has asked me, Corpse Girl, to kill a victim. This is where things get exciting. Dude, the music is dope, though. I giggle and feel my cheeks flush red. Why is it green? This is the first request I've had in about a, for about a week. I've been longing in every evening, fingers crossed that somebody has elected a new victim for me. Today, my wish has come true. I can't help but feel emotional at a time like this. My lower lip trembles and I feel tears swell up or welling up. I dab the corner of my eyes gently to avoid smudging my makeup. As I hover my mouse cursor over the view request button, a familiar and pleasant tingling sensation surges in my chest, my stomach, my thighs. I shiver with anticipation, my hot and steamy breath beginning to fog up the laptop screen. I was right. I do get turned on by this stuff. I click the button. Request details. Today, 240. Victim's phone. Downloading image. Is it Kur It's not Kurosawa. Some random person, I don't know who it is. The victim's photo automatically loads on my screen. The person in front of me is a total stranger, but that's okay. It doesn't change the task set out before me. A woman, rather plain, in her early 30s. She's well-dressed with minimal makeup, and she's not really putting her personality on display. It's a nice photo, better quality than some of the images I've received in the past. In fact, the photo looks like a corporate ID picture. I wonder if it was downloaded from a company's database or website. Well, the source of the photo doesn't matter. The simple fact of the matter is that somebody has made a request for this person to die. It falls to me to fulfill that request, and as Corpse Girl, I take re requests very, very seriously. I have the victim's photo and I have her phone number. All I need now is to select a way for her to meet her untimely demise. I previously thought about including an extra field on my website. An option for the user to choose the way they want their victim to die. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up earlier. That would be grisly. After all, it would reduce the amount of strain on my creativity if the method was decided for me. Yeah, I guess she'd... I guess my filter of, like, what's too much is non-existent. Just release the floodgates! Everything's welcome. But after careful consideration, I decided against it. Some people are sick. Twisted. I retract my previous statement. The cause of death could be far beyond my means and impossible to achieve. Therefore, allowing the user to find the cause of death just isn't feasible. Instead, I'll stick to my current modus operandi. Everything depends on the quality of the victim's photo. Ah, oh, interesting. If its detail and the victim's feature are easily distinguishable, then I can be rather creative with the cause of death. Perhaps the victim's face suffers grotesque burns, or she has an iron stake thrust through her skull. Fucking A, dude. However, the victim's photo is low quality and doesn't provide enough detail to identify the subject, I have to resort to the default cause of death. A terrible, unlucky fall from a great height. So that's how uh, the last girl died. 
had a bad picture. Maybe she slips, or maybe someone stumbles into her and sends her tumbling over a rail. That happened to the last girl. I wonder if Kurosawa is going to get that hot iron through her skull. The end result will be the same. A swift crushing death from on high. The victim will end up face down on the concrete. Completely unrecognizable, save for her clothes and accessories. It's not my favorite cause of death, but in some cases, it is necessary. Regardless, it is a valid way to fulfill the request. For now, it's time to get started. I can barely contain my excitement. I squirm against the couch, crossing and uncrossing my legs in a vain attempt to dissipate the heat rising through my body. Taking a deep breath, I try to calm my nerves and get to work. The victim will receive a photo of her own corpse, timestamped with the date of her death. It's Corpse Girl's signature move. My calling card, if you will. Seeing an Im image of one's own disfigured corpse is sure to strike fear into one's heart. And that's precisely the reason I take this step. To make the victim panic and act rashly. First things first, I save the victim's photo to my laptop's hard drive. I store it in a photo discreetly named System Files. <laughs> hidden away in the root directory of my operating system, a password encrypted directory of course. Next I open up my favorite image editing software and load the photo. Looking carefully at the detail in the picture, I can see that this will be a work of art. I can really go to town with this request. I minimize the software, open my web browser, and access a particular website. The database of the deceased, the DD as it's known on the dark web. My secret weapon, the ultimate resource for my work. Oh, that's how she gets the bodies. High resolution photographs, please search by using the tag. Photographs are retrieved from external servers on requests. This website does not store any image files. Popular tags. Blood, mail, choke, choking, accident, morgue, asphyxiation, car, severed, funny, bathroom. Alright, someone's into choking. Search tags. Ah! Aardvark.ambush. Abnormal. Abstract. The DD, the DD is a collection of countless high-resolution photographs of dead bodies. Murder victims, crime scenes, suicides... If somebody has died in one way or another, chances are good that some perverted individual has captured the moment in all its gl gory glory. Gross. Such valuable images are essential to my work. Using these photos as a base, I can edit my victim's details into the picture. Ah, that's how they do it beforehand. Did you miss the last girl biting the dust? Uh, Emmy? Yeah. Maybe. My process is simple. I start by locating the perfect corpse photo. I search the database and in less than two minutes I discover a disgustingly detailed photo of a woman with her entrails spilling from her stomach. Oh, this game is a lot. Her face is blue, having suffocated before even having a chance to bleed to death. She's about the same age as my victim. She's of a similar height and build. Finding a photo that specifically suits my victim's features is easy thanks to the DD's excellent catalog of tags and filters. I simply search for the keywords that match my victim's description and find a corpse that fits. Using this photo of a starting point, I digitally edit my victim's face onto the body. It's not some quick job that even a child can do. It's a painstakingly crafted work of art that would fool even the keenest eye. An hour passes, then two, then three. Before I know it, midnight has come and gone, but the work is nearing completion. All that remains is to add the final touches. I like to add specific distinguishable details to the image. A personal item or accessory, clothing, makeup, you name it, I can edit it in. With personal details added, I adjust the lighting and color palette just slightly enough to make the photo truly unique. If the victim decides to reverse image search the photo and discovers that it's a forgery, all my work would be for naught. Huh, that's, I was going to bring that up. Oh, God. What's up, Lonnie? Welcome to the stream. Enjoy them cookie. Hello. In the snakes. I'm a potato. Hey, it didn't, it didn't make me disappear the background. Hold on a minute. Oh, it's because I don't think I changed the thing. Hold on. There we go. We're fine. We're good now. We're potated. Hey, you, Milani. Hey. Oh. Did my did my game grow? Can you guys tell me if my game grew? I think my game moved, didn't it? Son of a bitch. Hold on. I think my game moved. No, it didn't. It did! I can tell. 
Why did my game move? Oh, God! How do I pause? It's skipping all kinds of stuff. Hold on. My game moved. Oh, God, this is annoying. Oh, game. Why would you move? You were in the perfect spot. Annoying you are. Good enough. As it, I don't know why the, the game moved, but, but that's obnoxious. Hopefully it's not going to move anymore. Oh, you did fuck shit up. Lonnie. Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie, pants pastrami. I don't fucking know. Don't ask me questions. Um, I need to scroll. Uh, and with that, the masterpiece is complete. A grisly, gruesome, grotesque. Gratuitously gory gift for the soon to be departed. The victim will receive this photo of a corpse that is, for all intents and purposes, a perfect replica of her own physical form. She will open the image on her phone, and the life she once knew will crumble to pieces. My lips curl into a satisfied smirk. During my hours of work, my breathing eventually steadied. My excited nerves settled into a zen like calm. But seeing the finished art piece now, I begin to feel my heart pounding once more. The macabre vision before me is exhilarating. Adrenaline and dopamine surge through my body, giving me a sudden head rush of bliss. I say that I'm a... To say that I'm attracted to the sight of blood and guts would be misleading. No, I'm not into that at all. The excitement stems from the thought of taking control of someone else's life. Dictating their future, control, their future controlling their fate. Yeah. For with the creation of this image, I have taken the victim's life in my own hands. Like a puppet master... Like a puppet master pulling the strings of a marionette. By forging this convincing creation, I will compel the victim to take her own life. That's right, my own hands need not be stained. The hands of Corpse Girl have never been dirty with the blood of a victim. This is the true nature of my work. Carefully crafting corpse photos in such a way to convince that victim... Convince the victim that their fate is already sealed, that no matter what they do, they cannot escape the death that waits them. And the date stamped of the photo is the icing on the cake, the ultimate driving force behind the victim choosing to end their own life. A date so near in the future, a time that has not yet occurred. A fiber of uncertainty carefully interwoven into the image will, that causes the victim to pause and consider the possibilities. Is this photo from the future? Is this truly my fate? How can I outrun a future that has been pre-decided? These are all the thoughts that run through the victim's mind. Despair and dread flood the senses. Overwhelmingly, anxiety overwhelmingly anxiety gives way to calm acceptance. This is my dead body. This is how I die. Why should I fight it? I would. Oh, I forgot I was a potato. <laughs> the Concerned Potato. That would be a great streamer name. Concerned Potato. You're playing Coles of the Lamb? Hey, they fixed the Twitch integration so people can have people get made in streamers games and stuff. Are you enjoying it? Getting eaten by... Is the kitten ch chomping on you? And when the victim's last vestige or vestige of resistance gently breaks like a silk spider web being torn by a cool breeze, they finally give in. They invite their end. This is the way it will go down for this woman. This complete and total stranger. I'm confident. Certain. Convinced. It was a sudden spark of inspiration that guided me to begin fabricating corpse photos about a year ago. I can never quite recall exactly what it was that spawned the idea. Sometimes I get close to remembering. I get close to remembering, but the recollection dances at the edge of my mind and slips back into the darkness. She has a teddy bear too, but it has X's in the eyes. Oh, I'm back. Back to normal, I'm fine. He's Loki incarnate. He got into your hair dryer yesterday and nearly gave me a. <laughs> uh, there's an S in front of heart, so I'm saying he gave you a sharp attack. That sounds like a terrible, terrible thing to have. I'd much rather have a heart attack, not a shard attack. Can you just imagine that? Just. 
unending shards. Regardless, I ventured down a dark and dangerous path. I built Corpse Girl's website and invited strangers to request the deaths of people they knew. It was a sales tactic, simply a way to encourage others to submit images. I had no intention or means of ending lives. Little I know the true power I wielded. I only intended to create corpse photos and send them to people for fun. I wanted to startle and scare some unsuspecting fools. It'd be a lie to claim that I didn't get off to it. The thought of people shrieking in fear at the sight of their own corpse has more, was more than delicious. It stayed in my budding lust. It filled a dark hole in the depths of my soul and gave me purpose. Never in a million years did I dream that one day one of my corpse photos would result in the death of another human being. Ah! I'll never forget her name. Ruri Hatano. 20-something, slim, gorgeous, eyes that took my breath away in the moment I gazed upon her portrait. She was the first person to make me feel bad about crafting hoax photos. The only person to make me feel bad about it. But I did it anyway. Corpse Girl never rejects requests. It's my, her, my conviction. I forged a beautiful rendition of her death. Thanks to some rather macabre source photos obtained via the database of the deceased, I strung Ruri's corpse up in the up in a field like a ghoulish scarecrow. Fucking A. The photo was incredible. It was my fifth or sixth work, the fifth or sixth time a user of Corpse Girl's website requested a death. Ruri Hotano died just hours after receiving the photo. I don't know why. I don't know if she killed herself or if someone murdered her. But I know one thing. Ruri Hotano's body, her real body, was found in a field hanging like a scarecrow surrounded by crows. That's fucked. Her eyes had been gouged out of her skull and her stiff fingers clutched her phone tightly. According to the news report, her phone displayed a familiar image, the very image I created of her corpse. When I first learned of Ruri's death, I was overcome with varying emotions. I felt sick, elated, disgusted, overjoyed, depressed, aroused. Had I someone caused her death? Was Corpse Girl responsible for taking a life? Even though my hands weren't stained with blood, I still felt responsible. A lurid truth descended upon me at the moment. Corpse Girl held the power to end lives, and the more I dwelled on the fact, the more obvious it became to me. I began to feel that power pulsing through my veins, thrumming in my blood as my heart pumped and pounded within my chest. I can't explain how the power works, and I don't know why I have it. But somehow, Corpse photos I create can compel a victim to end their own life, or compel someone else to end it for them. Ruri died in the, in the way that I had visioned. Her dead body matched the fake corpse photo I painstakingly crafted, and I didn't even have to leave the safety and comfort of my apartment to ensure her death. The corpse girl's power is real, extraordinary, and I vowed to exercise that power as frequently as possible. There's something in the background! Did you see it? There was like a demon with three or six eyes or something. Did you guys see it? You're playing Stray? Did you get it? Did you get any mods to make Stray look like your cats? Rui Hotano died last year. Since then, I've been chasing that rush, that thrill that comes with snuffing out his soul. It wasn't hard to grow the popularity of Corpse Girl's website after that incident. Particularly dark corners of the internet gobbled up the news with enthusiasm, and the site saw an influx of new visitors. And, on a few occasions, I've even overheard people in the real world whispering out, The mysterious website let lets you request a death. I've crafted po corpse photos for dozens of requests. Each photo is more convincing and realistic than the last, thanks to my ever-evolving skills. But none of my recent attempts have been successful. Not a single person has dropped dead since Ruri Hatano. I'm beginning to wonder if Corpse Girl's power has fizzled out. Or perhaps I've never had any power to begin with. Maybe Ruri's death was simply a fluke. A morbid coincidence. I spent countless hours doubting myself. Doubting Corpse Girl. I've tried so hard to replicate that one success. Every time I receive a quest, I do the same thing as I did in Ruri Hitano's case. I edit the photo of the victim. I create a convincing corpse photo and I timestamped it with the time of death. I send the photo to the victim and then I leave the rest up to fate. But nothing ever comes of it. I'm not so delusional to think that, in normal cir circumstances, a simple photo would be enough to convince someone to kill themselves. And even if that photo fell into someone else's hands, it wouldn't inspire them to go out and kill the victim. Of course not. However, there are no ordinary circumstances. There are no. Oh, no. Wow. 
Let me start it over. There are no old fuck that word. Ordinary circumstances. I once activated a power beyond the ken of mortal men. I caused Ruri Hotano to die by her own hands. Her by her own hand. By the hand of another. I keep hearing something in my mic and it's driving me nuts. I need to find a way to manifest my power once more. To prove that I, Corpse Girl, have the power of death and destruction at my fingertips. Once a new victim perishes, I know I I know it will pave the way to more and more deaths. My website will gain popularity and become more than just an urban myth. People will live their lives in fear, forever wondering if Corpse Girl is lurking behind the next text message they receive. Yes, I can see the future I crave so clearly in my mind. I'm close to achieving my goal. I know I am. And when my dream comes true, I can finally... Playing on PS4 and I don't think I can do that. Oh, that's a bummer. My daughter cried like 10 minutes into the tutorial. <laughs> if it was my cat, it would be worse. Is it sad? The incessant chirping of birds gently kindles the embers of my consciousness. My heavy, my heavy eyelids open to find my body contorted before me. Legs splayed across the couch in the most uncomfortable position I can imagine. I groan and twist my torso, letting my spine pop and crack until the aches in my body drift away. I need to stop falling asleep on the couch. I'm still young, but I can't handle the night away from my comfortable bed. My eyes fall upon my laptop, lying on its side on the floor. The screen is blank, the battery drained. I briefly panic, hoping against hope that I save my work before falling asleep. I stumble to my feet and pick up the laptop, then charge toward the power outlet. I plug in, boot up, revitalizing the mechanical beast and feeling a wave of relief as the whirring of internal fans signify the breath of life. The screen flickers and bathes my eyes in a harsh light. My eyes squint against my will, and I make out the image before me. A mutilated corpse of my latest victim. Perfection in picture form. The timestamp in the lower corner reads May 22nd, 1107 AM, tomorrow's date. The photo is ready to be sent out. If I send it now, the victim will receive it immediately, notice the date, and realize that her death is imminent. Ooh, scarring us. Sorry. It's time to set the wheels of demise in motion. Leaving my laptop at the outlet, I quickly dart into the kitchen. Well, the call of the kitchen is misleading. It's simply a tiled area connected to my living space with a small refrigerator, microwave oven, and a single hot plate. A small stack of drawers is nestled next to the fridge, and I pull open the second drawer from the top. Plunging my hand inside is always an odd sensation. My fingers get buried beneath a dozen cheap plastic flip phones. Oh. Disposable phones for uh, numbers. I grasp one of the phones between my thumb and forefinger and remove it from the drawer. It's a scratched up pink model from 2010 or so. A relic from a time not all that long ago, but that may as well be forgotten. I flip the screen up and turn the device on, relieved to see this artifact still holds power. To be fair, I charged up all of these phones just a few weeks ago, but the fact they retain a charge after being inactive for so long is a testament to their engineering. In any shady lighting work, these kinds of phones are referred to as burners. Cheap, disposable devices that are discarded as soon as their purpose is fulfilled. I acquire them by rather unsavory means, but that's neither here nor there. I use these photos, or these phones to send out the photos they make. By doing this, I avoid using my personal phone and thus prevent anything from being traced back to me. When a photo has been sent, I keep the burner phone for 24 hours, just in case the victim sends a reply. I know I'd get a good laugh out of that. Of course, I don't keep the phone on my, on my person. I store it in an old shed out the back of my apartment building. You keep it close. When 24 hours have passed, I remove the phone's SIM card, snap it in half, and discard it with combustible trash. The phone itself gets smashed and trashed through the dumpsters outside a convenience store. I also delete the photos of my hard drive and clear my internet history. Obviously, I don't even use my own internet connection at home. I leech off my global neighbor's Wi-Fi. I was going to say... <laughs> Even then, like, they can still trace it to you. He's under the impression I can't afford my own internet connection. Whether or not I convince him of such is irrelevant, so he's happy to share his connection with me. Should the police ever try to track any, track any of my actions, they'll only be led straight to my neighbor. They'll be led to the connections to his Wi-Fi. I can still track you. I've gone to great lengths to ensure my actions are untraceable. This has all been in an anticipation of my inevitable success. 
Looking down at the pink phone in my hand, I clear my mind and focus on the task before me. The photo is transferred easily from my laptop to the burner phone. Once complete, I open the text messaging app and enter the victim's phone number. I leave the message field blank, but I attach the photo of corpse. Of course. The victim will receive an empty text message from an unknown number with only an image attached. The message is just about ready to be sent to send, but there's one more flourish I'd like to add. I open a particular app I previously downloaded to every burner phone and simply called Number Mask, and it's one of the most ingenious apps I've ever used. The app asks for a number I want to use. I punch in my memorized trademark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now when I send a text message, the receiver will see these numbers appear on the caller ID. Not only does it mask the burner's real phone number, but it's an extra calling card to help boost my infamy. I smirk, my thumb hovering the send message button. This is it. This is going to be a long-awaited victory. The second victim to end up dead. I just know it. This is the step, stepping stone to my success. The second of many bodies that will pave the way to my glory. I send the message. 2010 wasn't really Garrett. The, the phones are. Look at the phones from 2012. I arrive at work on time. Just as usual. That I think 2012 was when or, uh, touch screens were still fairly new. My handbag is heavy with the weight of several cans of co coffee. Hopefully enough to help me power through the day after having had such a late night. I can't help but... Yawn loudly as I wait for the elevator in the lobby. Can you guys hear my, like... Can you guys hear, like, mouth-smacking noises? There's something that I'm hearing, and... I don't know what it is, but it's driving me batshit insane. It kind of sounds like mouth-smacking noises. And it's fucking driving me nuts. God, the sounds are so loud. Just before the elevator doors open, my phone starts to ring. I step aside and answer the call. Hey. Hi. We can change that. Keeps That scares me every time. Hi, Noriko. It's Aoi! Oh, shit. Did I call it about time? She's the murderer. She does the murdering. Oh, shit. I Not called it from the beginning. I'm just about to go into the office. Oh, should I call back later? It's no problem. Don't stress. Okay, um, sorry. The nervous, apologetic girl on the other end of the call is Aoi Sato, or Sato, an old school friend from back in the day. Though we never really had a common interest, we used to be inseparable at school. She was shy, I was introverted. It was a combination that worked in our favor, even if our conversations were a little on the boring side. To say that we're no longer shy and introverted, introverted wouldn't be entirely true. Howie has gotten better. She's definitely more outgoing, but she still suffers from a great deal of social anxiety. As for me, I'm still pretty introverted. My tolerance for being around people other, being around other people has improved a bit, but I do prefer solitude. And visiting places I've never been to before puts me on edge. To call Aoi my best friend would be accurate. She's my closest confidant. Even so, she knows nothing about my part-time masquerading as Corpse Girl. No one does, and I plan to keep it that so, way. So, Aoi, what did you want to talk about? Uh, oh, well, you see, that guy at work is still bothering me, and I wanted to see if Let's go you fuck him up! more advice for me. Why am I so protective of Aoi? I know she's going to be the murderer. I know she's going to be the murderer. Oh my god, we haven't had a haiku redemption in fucking forever. A haiku about people who smack their lips while eating? Oh god. How does that, It's 575, right? Haiku? It's 575? Five, five. Haiku. God damn it. Let me type. Let me type. There you go. Haiku. Format. Five, seven, five. Yes. Yuri, your name color changed. You went from a dark green to a light green. Did you do that? Uh, lip smacking. Okay. How do I, I don't remember how to do the thing. 
haiku add. I think I got it. Wow, I remember the command. All right, lip smacking people with their smacking slurpy sounds. Close your goddamn mouth. That is a great haiku. I don't care what you say. Fantastic. Nailed it. Onwards. I hope you enjoy it. Ah, jeez. <laughs> You're the older guy that always hits on you. <sighs> what a creep. You were 19 for God's sake. Gross. I I think he's fifty two. Ew. You know his actual age. Um. Well, whatever. If he's still bothering you, you have to take a stand. He's not your coworker, right? Just a regular customer. That's right. Then tell your manager. Have him banned from the venue. I I can't talk to the manager. Uh. Don't please don't be the murderer. She's so soft. On your own two feet. She's so soft. I know. Well, if talking to the manager is out of the question, then you need to be firm with the creep. Tell him you won't stand for being groped anymore. He gropes you? It's simply unacceptable. And if he won't change, you won't serve him anymore. No, you fucking beat him up with a goddamn baseball bat. He's. He's scary, Noriko. I don't know if I can confront him like that. Oh, I hate. He's always drunk. Even before he comes into the place, I try not to serve him too much, but... <sighs> Are you sure you can't quit that stupid job? Oh. Working at a maid cafe really doesn't suit you at all. I thought you wanted a government position. I do. I want to work in a cozy office, kind of like you, but you know I don't have any qualifications. Why don't I see if there's anything open here? Maybe Shinya can help out. He got me this job, remember? Shinya? Maybe. He was always a nice guy, right? <sighs> Please don't. Please don't. What'd you send me? Pretty damn good, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He just opened those beer bottles with his goddamn eyeballs. I have no idea who that's from. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. He's super nice. A stick in the mud, but a nice one. Noriko, don't be mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want me to ask? Yes, please. If it's no trouble. It's no trouble. I'll talk to Shinya. Then maybe you can quit that crappy job and come work with me. Oh, that really does sound wonderful. She sounds so soft! Noriko, I'd be so lost without you. <laughs> Don't be silly. Or You're she's going to find out that Noriko is Corpse Girl and then gets a... What's it called? A worship... Whatever. Where she, where she, they, she would essentially worship her. That would equally suck. That's from Eurotrip. I've never seen it. Thank you. I end the call and heave a sigh, having to go and ask Shinya about a job actually is a pain in the ass, but I'd never admit it that to Aoi. I want to help the poor girl. I really do. I do nearly anything for her. The elevator arrives at the lobby and I step inside as soon as the doors open. Good morning, Kurosawa. 
Fujikawa. Good morning. Shouldn't he takes me by surprise as I exit the elevator? Has he been waiting for me here? I wanted Probably. to catch you before we sit down to work. I sent you another friend request. Can you make sure you got it this time? Well, now you're gonna have to accept it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because now you're gonna try to get Aoi a job. What am I supposed to do when he puts me on the spot like this? I try not to groan as I get my phone out and open up Nowies. It's impossible to hide my screams from Shinya's piercing gaze. Well, what do you know? I have a new friend request. Oh, great. It worked this time. Go ahead and accept it, please. Yeah, sh sure thing. Can you give me nice guys TM vibes? Yeah, sure thing. I hesitantly accept the, the request. A little fireworks animation pops up on my screen with a celebratory celebratory message about making a new friend yay looks like we're officially friends now so uh can i call you noriko from now on i've never cared much for, for, for formalities i try to adhere to them in the workplace but honestly i don't care if people refer to me by my first or last name regardless of whether they're friends or not that's fine you can call me noriko genius eye light up that seems to have made the boy happy <laughs> thank you now you ask about uh, you can call me shinya of course Shinya. <laughs> hey, we've known each other since junior high, right? Shouldn't we have been on a first name basis anyway? Yes, that's true, but we're in the office now, you know? It wouldn't do if you started working here and called me Shinya right away. I suppose. Anyway, I'm really glad we're proper friends now, Noriko. Maybe we can get a coffee sometime. I, I bring my coffee in the office, sorry. I can't help but feel he's trying to push his luck as far as it will go. Any suspicions I had about him having crushed on me are now confirmed. I brush a stray lock of hair out of my face and smile as sweetly as I can while I change the subject. Hey, actually, I wanted to ask you something. Are there any more temp jobs available here right now? Temp jobs, huh? Are you looking to pick up extra hours? No, not exactly. I'm asking for a friend who needs a new job. A friend of Noriko's? Well, let's see. We pretty much always have data entry rules up for grabs. Unless your friend wants something more interesting? Do they have any particular qualifications? Not really. Data entry is more than fine. Actually, you already know who I'm talking about. Remember Aoi Sato? Aoi Sato? Yes, I think I do remember her. That, that really shy girl from our school days, correct? That's her, yeah. Wow. I never knew you were still in touch with school friends, Noriko. Aoi's probably the only one. We're fairly close. Is that so? As for me, I don't really have any friends from back then. Shinya's heartbreaking confession doesn't surprise me too much. He doesn't strike me as the type of person to have many friends at all. Sure, I'm the shame. I'm the same, but... <laughs> but what am I saying? We're friends now. So I guess I do keep in touch with school friends. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, I'll ask my superior if we can get Sato an interview. Is that okay? I'd really appreciate that. Thank you, Shinya. No problem. Leave it to me. He gives me an awkward salute before skipping away. Our little exchange has obviously made him pretty happy. For some reason, something that Tomo Watanabe said yesterday pops into my head. I was going to say, I thought she was going to pop up right now. She mentioned that I'm leading Shinya on, but that's not true, is it? I shake the thought out of my head. I'm just being nice to him. That's not wrong, is it? I take a seat at my desk and perform my morning ritual. From my handbag, I retrieve my headphones, coffee, and breath mints. I keep putting- I seeing a D in that word for some reason. Computer on, music playing, coffee open. My finger taps- my fingertips- ugh, my fingers tap rhythmically against the keyboard, and I slip into the usual workday- workday trance. Oh, go away. My walk to the train station is interrupted by a familiar grating voice. Sounds like both of you are getting on pretty well. Shut up, go away. Uh, how did you... Oh, of course, Tomoe and I are already friends on noise. She would have seen the notification when I accepted Shinya's request. It's actually kind of strange that Tomoe and I are connected through the... I was going to say, you were friends with her before him? We added each other on the first day of work. Ah, okay, that explains it. Before I learned how much of an intolerable excuse for a human being she is. We simply never deleted each other even after all these months. Her posts are entertaining anyway. We don't 
or just not deleting each other out of stubbornness and pride. And since I rarely ever post anything myself, she probably forgot we were con content or connected at all until today. Now look, don't get me wrong, you hear? I ain't actually interested in Shinya. Nah, I'm real happy for you both, like. Go away. But what I can't stand is a skank like yourself getting some while I'm over here all dry like a desert. Don't be a bitch. What the hell are you talking about? It pisses me off that guys just sluts like you, and you barely <sighs> have to put in any work. Oh, the valley girl accents. Shut up. Meanwhile, nice girls like me gotta put in so much effort to even get noticed. Is there such thing as nice girls, TM? There's not. That's not a thing. Go away. I don't like you. You think all of this is just natural? <laughs> I put so much effort into how I look, you know? And guys like Shinya don't even bat an eyebrow at me. You mean bat an eyelid, uh. right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it don't matter. I'm sick of skanks like you getting everything for nothing. Look, let me be honest with you. I'm not interested in Shinya, and I'm not trying to be with him. Oh, she's recording this, isn't she? I don't chase guys, and it's pretty rare that they chase me. You've got me all wrong. <laughs> like I'd believe you. Do you spend your time chasing chicks then? That's not, not your, your business. business. Yeah. But you don't have to worry about me pursuing Shinya. Tell you what, any guy at the office is all yours, okay? I'm not interested. Oh, is that how it's gonna be, slut? Ugh, go away. You think no one is good enough for you? But they're good enough for me. Go away! You're just like all the other girls. You think I'm worth being pitied? You think I need it? Oh my god. Here, there's a wall over there. Go yell at it. Well, I don't want your pity. You're nothing but a fake skank. Now I'm a fake skank. Go away. Somebody pushes forward, her bulk forces me off the sidewalk into the thicket of trees bordering the path. You bitch! Ugh. <sighs> Was that the girl in the corpse bag? The burning slap across my face comes out of nowhere. I'm blinded by white stars. My entire face feels like it's on fire. This She's going to be the body. The strike is hard, sharp, vicious. It happens so suddenly that I'm having difficulty processing it. I'm going to accidentally kill her. And then she's going to get, quote unquote, aroused and want to do it again. I stumble and then she's going to be like, oh my God. I just got a murder request and it looks just like this girl it looks just like her it's perfect i'll stuff her into a bag and pretzel her up and it'll just be perfect i'm calling it excuse me i stumble but my legs don't quite get, <gasps> give out my mind races trying to put together what just happened Tomoe hit me why why did she hit me there's a strange sort of disconnect in my mind my body doesn't feel like my own like this isn't actually happening to me, but rather I'm watching it happen to someone else. Time seems to slow down and speed up all at once. The slap replaced twice in my mind before Tomoe's hand even leaves my face. I catch a glimpse of her furious expression, red and strained and overcome with anger. I hate you. I hate everyone like you. Don't pity me. Go away. The second strike connects with my chin and I flinch. My entire body paralyzed with pain. She hit me again? I hate you. I hate you! Okay. Tomoe has lost it. She's absolutely furious, and I can't figure out what I did wrong. Her third attack is a curled fist and aimed straight at my stomach. Through sheer luck or complete accident, I stumbled backward, narrowly avoiding the punch and instead landing on my rear. The pavement is rough and hard, but I'm sure it feels a lot better than taking a fist in the gut. Tomoe screams and then rushes at me, but I scramble to my feet and grab her by the wrists. She flails wildly, her eyes looking like they'll pop out of her skull at any given second. Her breathing is harsh and ragged, and tear tears of rage have caused a flood of clotted makeup to run down her face. Calm down! Calm down! Yeah, chill out, dude. She struggles against me, slowly giving in as my tight grip prevents her from attacking any further. She begins to sob softly. I, I hate you! I hate everything about you! Why? Just <laughs> fucking chill out! I didn't do nothing to you. God. With a great pull, Tomoe frees herself from my, gris my grip. She steps away, cursing, and then runs past me. 
and bl I blink in disbelief as she breaks into a sprint heading in the direction of the train station she's actually envious of me watch I raise a hand to my tender face and touch it gently the stinging sensation is completely new to me never before have I an attack like that please don't tell me it turned you on all that about? I can't believe she hit me there. did you guys see the smiley face on the, the the bench we need to go back to that there was a smiley face the pack of frozen vegetables pressed against my face soothes my swollen jaw but does very little to calm my nerves I'm still on edge after what happened today. Someone actually physically attacked me, all because I said something. I'm not sure what that provoked her anger. Maybe that girl is more complicated than I gave her credit for. Seems like she has her own inner, inner demons just like the rest of us. I've replayed the event in my head a hundred times since returning home without confronting her. Without confronting Tomoe about it, I don't think I'll ever figure out what incited her aggression. But I don't plan on talking to her about it anytime soon. I wouldn't say I'm scared of her, but I don't exactly want to encourage a repeat performance. She's going to submit uh, a revenge death hit on me. And I'm going to have a conundrum because I said earlier that Corpse Girl always delivers regardless. So am I going to have to fake my death, present it to her as I'm a dead person, and then fake that I come back as a ghost so she dies? If I'm guessing all these, I'm going to feel awesome. I rest the bag of frozen vegetables on the small coffee table next to me. I think I've done all I can to reduce the painful swelling for now. Sighing and leaning back, I let the soft padding of the couch consume my body as I sink deeper. Don't fall asleep on the couch again! My eyes glaze over as I bring my phone to my face. My fingers lazily tap and scroll as I look through a carefully curated obituary news feed. A list of deaths, deaths that have been reported throughout the day. Oh... Come on, Nick. Using a set of handy filters, I narrow the feed down to include only women's deaths in the age range of 30 to 50. I set the location to cover all of Japan. I immediately exclude any results that mention natural causes of death. I'm looking for specific cases, suicides, or as is more often reported, accidents. Of course, I'm not. I'm looking to find out whether my latest victim has offed herself yet. Should the search string result? return no results then it's pretty easy to look up recent murders there's a there are few and far between between suicides accidents and murders i've covered all the potential ways my victim could die nine out of ten of the search results include a photograph of the deceased not a photo of their corpse mind you this isn't the database of deceased i'm looking through rather it's usually a nice flattering picture of the recently departed submitted by their kin to go along with their obituary I use the photos submitted with obituaries to compare and match the images of my victims. But obituaries wouldn't be in the day of, right? This is the only reliable way I have to discover whether or not my victims have perished. If I knew a victim's name, I could easily look up their current fate, but my website doesn't ask for that information. I call it respect for the victim's privacy, but there's a lot more to it than that. But that's a topic to dwell on another day. Tonight's search turns up no solid leads. I'm disappointed, but these, this result isn't entirely unexpected. After all, I set the date on my victim's photograph to tomorrow. There's still time for her to freak out and end it all. I decided to go to sleep early tonight. I'm not even feeling hungry enough to eat the cheap convenience store meal that's been sitting in my fridge since yesterday. Though, if I go to sleep now, it will feel like tomorrow arrives sooner. Tomorrow. I'll have to see Tomo at work. There's no way I can avoid her since her desk is so close to mine. The idea doesn't sit well with me. On the other hand, my victim might conquer herself, which would definitely make me feel better. It could very well be my next success, and the suspense is just about enough to kill me. Tomorrow. Is she going to apologize to us? Tell me she's jealous. Wednesday morning. My typing is hesitant and distracted this morning. My fingers falter, misstep, and tap backspace repetitively. Wow, we just skipped all the morning routine into the office. This is no good. I can't focus on my work while staring at the top of Tomoe's head popping up from behind a monitor a few desks away. Even my work playlist isn't inspiring me to pulverize the keyboard today. Normally, a blast of pure volume and a shot of caffeine is enough to carry me to the greatest heights of productivity. I press a finger to my pursed lips, trying hard to regain my focus. I absentmindedly notice that I missed the edge of my top lip and applying lipstick this morning. Damn, I'm really out of sorts today. 
At least I managed to apply some extra blush to cover up the faint bruising on my face. I might have overdone it a little, but it's better than looking like I just stepped out of a boxing Good ring. Good morning, Noriko. Uh, Boy, have I got some neat news for you. Yeah, did you get a job for Aoi? I'm so absorbed in my own thoughts that I barely register Shinya standing in my front, Noriko. in front of my desk. Excuse me, Noriko. Are you in there? Uh, huh? My eyes fixate on Shinya's goofy smile. I click to remove my headphones. Fujikawa, uh, Shinya, sorry. Hi. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Tired is all. Oh, I hear you. I was up late last night. Boy, I must have been up past ten. Just could not put down this new crime thriller I've been reading. Oh, yeah, right. I was... <clears throat> I was up late reading, too. <laughs> She's already bored. Your horror novels, right? Don't they leave you feeling a little scared before you go to sleep? No, not really. It's all fiction, so it's pretty easy to distinguish from reality. Oh, I should... I should get the... A sound effect from Letter Canny for the lurk command. The Ninja Dust! Did you get that? It's all fiction, so it's... Oh, yeah. Is she read that. So? Wow, that's not like my book at all. The crimes in this story are all based on real cases. My jaw hits the floor every time I turn the page. Am I going to snap at Shinya? Uh-huh, yeah. Anyway, let me tell you this. Your friend Sato can take a data entry opening starting from Monday. She doesn't even need to interview. That's how much the boss trusts me. Uh-oh. I'm generally impressed with Shinya's ability to score Aoi a job. Say what you want about the guy, but the big wigs obviously have faith in him. Wow, Shinya. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't ask me to go out for coffee. <laughs> don't thank me yet. Sato is going to be worked to the bone. I hope she's prepared for it. Trust me, anything will be better than her current job. Really, thank you, Shinya. You came through for us here. Well, I'm just happy to help. Hey, uh, Noriko. Can I ask you something? Don't do sure. it. Shoot. Shoot? Oh, right. An expression. Sorry, I just remember this case in the novel. I'm Breathe, dude. A police officer shoots at a perp only to... Breathe. Chill. Relax. Hey, you uh, wanted to ask me something? Right. Uh, are you friends with Watanabe? Not really. She's kind of a bitch. I blink a couple of times. You're on a first-name basis with her. Then you must be great friends. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I wouldn't say... Listen, would you mind... Oh, hell yeah, dude! Fucking... Did you... Oh, now I would feel bad because she's kind of a bitch. I'm... I'm kind of interested in... Uh, taking her out sometime. But I could never ask her myself. Oh my god, bugs. There's two of them. Fuckers. Miss symbols. I'm stunned, gobsmacked, speechless. Shinya likes Tomoe? I thought he likes me. Is my intuition wrong? I wonder if the clues have been in front of me this whole time. What else have I been haven't I been seeing? Noriko? What do you say? Sure. Um Shinya, look. Honestly, I'm not really friends with Tomoe. I don't think I can help you. Yeah, I'm not really friend uh, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that situation. Oh, I see. That's a shame. I thought maybe you were close. Darn. I guess there's not Or just go ask her there. yourself. Even after I helped you and Sato out and all. Says the guy that doesn't ask people out. Is he seriously trying to guilt me? I have to hand him to him. I didn't think you had it in him. I suppose you can just tell Sato to start work on Monday morning. Guess I'll see you around the office then. I don't Dude, she's like the cube over. Just eh. Whatever. She then leaves, and I bury my face in my hands. Has this world gone mad all of a sudden? Shinya to likes Tomoe, not me. It's not that I'm disappointed. Hell, I don't have feelings for the guy, but for him to be interested in someone vap or vapid like her just blows my mind. To add insult to literal injury, Tomoe insulted me yesterday. She has a vicious violent side to her that Shinya doesn't know about. He could be in real danger if he pursues her. I'm, com I'm completely unable to process what I should do. Shinya scored Aoi a job, and I'm truly thankful. Do I feel like I owe him one? Should I ask Tomoe out for him, or warn him about her? You know, that's really none of your business. I'd just stay out of it. 
I need to clear my head. I decide to step away from my desk and visit the restroom. If you come in here, bitch, I'm giving you the swirly of your lifetime. Though I have no need for the need to use the restroom, I enter the stall and lock the door behind me. Sitting in the toilet's closed lid, I lean back and exhale. I'm getting too caught up in the office drama. That's what the issue is. It's unlike me. I'm supposed to be stoic, unflinching in my ideology, my entire identity. My emotions are better locked away than stitched on my sleeve. I'm corpse girl for crying out loud. My purpose is bigger than all of this. I'm destined for greatness. The day will come when people fear my name, right? I, sh I shake the doubts from my mind and pat my cheeks. I'm doing all of this for the right reasons. I know I am. What? What right reasons? Wow, that was a tongue twister. If I start doubting myself now, I'll never see my mission through. What's your mission? An unfamiliar jingle rings out through the restroom, echoing off the walls. It sounds like a phone alert. But where did it come from? It takes me a few seconds to realize I have my own phone in my hands and it's vibrating in incessantly. I must have grabbed it subconsciously from my desk when I stood up. It's... Come away. Send me a murder to kill myself. The screen is lit up with a message reads. One new article matches your custom filter. Dead body lull. Wait, what? The auto news feed I set up last night, it actually located something. I hurriedly unlocked my screen and opened a certain app. The same app I was tra trawling through last night looking for obituaries. A little unread mail icon sits at the top of the screen, blinking and practically shouting for my attention. I hit the icon and read the information presented to me. Article posted today, 1122. Oh boy, that's like 15 minutes early. Er, it was 1107 or 1127, I don't remember. Keywords found. Miss accident, numerical data range, 3050. Image data found, yes. Wednesday, May 27th, Miss Akane uh, Suramaki, 36 of Chiba Prefecture, was pronounced dead this morning at her personal residence way early, 8.38 a.m. The chief coroner reports that Miss uh, Suramaki was involved in an accident resulting in self-asphyxiation. What the fuck? Miss Suramaki survived by her husband, Mr. Goro Suramaki, 42, and their daughter, Miss Fu Suramaki, 1. Aww. The funeral service will be had, held on Friday, May 29th. View image. I immediately tap the button gasp at the, as the image loads. It's her, the photo. It's unmistakably the same woman. And the same photo. Same feature. Her husband killed her. Same features, little makeup, no signs of personality. Akane Suramaki, the latest victim to receive a photo of her own corpse. It's the same photo. My breathing stops all of a sudden. I'm gasping for, I'm gasping for air. My cheeks on fire. My fingers numb. I did it. My, t my meticulously crafted photo caused this woman to end her own life. An accident resulting in self asphyxiation, meaning she died by suicide, strangled herself, or held her head down in the bath. The news never reports anything as a suicide. It's such a taboo topic in this culture. Everything is always an accident. All this time, all this time I've been trying to compel someone to kill themselves, my corpse photos constantly becoming more and more elaborate, more and more convincing, unrealistic. And now, now somebody has died again. Because of me. Because of Corpse Girl. I was right all along. I do possess power. I have the power to end lives through my work. My art. I've known it all this time, and I've finally proven it. Rui Hotano's death planted the seeds of belief in my mind, the belief that Corpse Girl is more than a mortal being. And now, Akane Tsurumaki's demise has caused those seeds to bloom and blossom into pure certainty. Corpse Girl truly can end lives. It's a wonderful revelation, and it re light relieves my turbulent <gasps> mind. However, I can't get my fingers to scroll back up to reread the obituary. <sighs> Sorry. My hands aren't functioning. My legs dangle lifelessly from the toilet seat, and my coffee from this morning is working its way back up my throat. I feel the sting of tears in my eyes. Sweat trickles on my forehead, dripping down my uncharacteristically thick makeup. All of a sudden, I can't breathe. My lungs refuse to take in any more oxygen. I panic and fall forward, miraculously slamming my hands into the store doll to prevent my head from colliding with the floor. My nails scrape against the door's enamel paint peeling chunks of green. Why is green red and red green? From the surface, as I slide down, down, and down until my head rests com uncomfortably on the damp tiles. Okay, I'm losing it. 
I just roll back and my tongue lolls out of the side of my mouth, dangerously close to the tiled floor, but completely out of my sight and mind. I taste ew. I taste foundation and blush. Oh, I thought she meant foundation like floor. She means like makeup. A little bit of sweat, then nothing at all as the air, still air, envelops my taste buds. My photo killed that woman. That woman killed herself because of my photo. My photo killed that woman. That woman killed herself because of my photo. My woman, that, my woman killed that photo of herself because of that photo of the woman who killed herself in the photo. My eyes begin to regain their focus and my stomach turns, heaves, and shakes, and warm coffee spills from my lips as I try to smile but only manage to gurgle. Wah! The gritty paint underneath my fingernails has a rough texture but I don't like, that I don't like very much. This part reminds me of Doki Doki. I feel queasy and ecstatic at the same time. It's a horribly wonderful feeling that I could do without. So much for stoic, unflinching Noriko. Remember stoic, unflinching Noriko? This is her, writhing on the bathroom floor, her lungs working once more and her breaths ragged and gasping, sucking in air like a mosquito sucks in blood. This is Noriko. Noriko with her grandiose fantasies of death and killing people without having to kill them at all. Without having to leave her apartment because the outside world is scary and there are people out there probably trying to kill her. This is Noriko, me, the real me. Acting tough and fearless when I'm crying on the inside. Always sad. Always miserable. Always lying on the bathroom floor with my fists clenched and my phone resting in a puddle. And my life slowly spiraling out of control. This is me. I did this. I killed that woman. She had a husband and a daughter and some random person requested that I kill her. So I did. She probably didn't do anything wrong. She looked boring. She must have just rubbed somebody the wrong way. Maybe she didn't even know what she did. Just like how I rubbed Tomoe the wrong way and I don't even know what I did. But Tomoe slapped me. Twice. Hard. And it hurt. It must have hurt that woman too when she strangled herself and killed herself. I killed her. I directly killed her with my indirect actions. She's dead now. And I'm alive. I'm still here lying on the bathroom floor on the 14th story of Shin Shinjuku's Temujin office building and I have a paint underneath my fingernails. And now he's going to start work here on Monday. But I did it. I killed her. Finally, after countless months of pretense of false starts of failures and disappointments, I killed somebody again. Corpse Girl strikes for the second time. And above all else, above this grime and muck on the floor and the ting tingling feeling beneath, underneath my fingernails, above all that, this feels good. This feels so, so good. I don't like this. The colors keep changing. Blood has returned to my legs. The pins and needles have faded. And my toes quiver beneath my stockings and shoes. An electrical charge pulses down my thighs and dissipates through my feet. I manage to plant two hands firmly in the tiles and push myself up onto my wobbly knees. I suck in air and breathe all of it back out almost uh, at once. I feel dizzy and a bizarre warmth is welling up inside my stomach and chest. Oh god. I manage to steady myself enough to sit back on top of the toilet seat with my feet planted firmly in the ground and my hands resting on my lap. I try to regain my sense of self. I might have lost my composure a little bit upon reading the news, but who could blame me? Everything I've worked for over the past last year is finally starting to pay off. My second victim is dead, but this corpse girl's popularity is sure to rise. More and more people will issue requests through the website. More and more people will receive corpse photos, and more and more people will. She killed herself. She killed herself. Oh, how I wish I could see the real body. If only I could see her mangled corpse, drenched in sweat and finally at peace. I notice my phone is wedged between my wet fingers. I must have subconsciously scooped it up from the pool of muck on the floor. I try to ignore the sticky texture clinging to the screen. My fingers no longer numb. I scroll up and reread the obituary article. Pronounced dead. Dead, pronounced dead. My breathing staggers once again. My jaw gently lowers. Involved in an accident, hot steam clouds my face, resulting in self asphyxiation I salivate unconsciously, a trickle of moisture creeping down my chin and dripping on my lip. My cheeks are flushed, my vision slightly blurred. She killed herself because of me. She killed. I let out a gasp as my hips rise against my will. My toes curl, my legs stiffen, my skin tingles. I lean back against the cistern and cold porcelain penetrating the thin fabric of my clothes and chilling my burning hot skin. My eyelids flutter as my mind hazes over. I can't control my body any longer. Are you getting possessed? What the fuck? All the anticipation of the last few days, the tension building up in my muscles. I... I can't. My legs tense up. My knees buckle. My neck tilts back. A whispered gasp slips softly between my lips. 
I fall and falls to the ground once more as my fingers slowly uncurl. A dull tink sound as it hits the floor is the last thing my foggy mind registers before I drift away. That was the world's most intense orgasm. You look like horse shit. Shut the fuck up. Go away. Actually, I'm, <laughs> I just had the best. Oh, you, you can't bring me down. I'm on Clyde 9. Some always brazen drawl snaps me out of the dead-eyed stare. Looks like you've been sleeping in the sewer. It suits you. Shut the fuck up. I don't know what she's talking about. I can't really focus on what she's saying. I realize I've been staring at my computer screen for about 20 minutes, rarely blinking. Was that all just a daydream? Or did I... Did I make it back to my desk? My mouth is dry, as though I've stopped producing sal saliva altogether. A dull throb in my lap caused me to cross one leg over the other in an attempt to get comfortable. You know, I'm talking here. It's rude to ignore your superior. Get fucked. I swallow in an attempt to moisten my parched throat before speaking in a cracked voice. <laughs> you need something? Thought you should know that Shinya and I are going to hit the town on Friday night. Turns out he's fancied me for a while now. Sweet. Peace. In the end, seems like the better gal won, don't you think? Go away. Read my lips. Go away! I don't like it. Seems that way. Is that all? I can tell Tomoe is trying to get under my skin, but I'm honestly not in the mood to deal with it right now. <laughs> I thought you'd be more torn up about it. I don't give a shit! I don't care in the slightest. Yeah. Why don't you go sit back at your desk? Whatever. Hey, maybe I'll meet you after work again. <laughs> That's right. I'll fuck you up this time. Why? So you can attack me again? I realize my voice was louder than intended. A few people nearby tilt their heads quizzically. Tomoe takes a cautious step back. That's right. Step back, bitch. Keep your voice down, psycho. Stuff like that's between me and yes. <laughs> Excuse me? Fucking gaslight? Don't tell me what I can and can't say. When you attack me, you piece of shit. You assaulted me. I should report you to the police. Don't you dare. What? 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 What are you gonna do? Hmm? You gonna hit me? You gonna hit me? Do it! We're in public right now! Lost for words, Tomoe turns tail and walks away. I sigh and lean back in my office chair. Why do I feel so exhausted? My mind flickers, piercing together fragments of memory from the bathroom a short while ago. That's right. I let myself get carried away in the exhilaration of my success. I temporarily stepped away from my own body and let my basest... Basest? Is this supposed to be basic? Or is it bassist? What's a bassist instinct? Take over. But I'm in control now. I'm myself again. I'm Noriko, stoic and unflinching. I'm corpse girl, corpse girl, successful and feared. I can kill people as easy as I can manipulate a photo. People like Tomoe should be scared of me. People like Tomoe shouldn't mess with me. I'm in control now. Climbing the steps of my apartment is always such a chore. I wish I'd moved into a building with an elevator, but I simply can't afford to when I moved out of my own last year. These old apartments, these old apartment buildings creak and groan when you ascend the stairs. On top of that, you can hear the bustling of other people within their tiny homes as you progress up each floor. There's always a slight whiff of mold or mildew whenever I ascend the stairs. I want to chalk it up to the fact the building is so old, but it is possible some of the residents here don't keep their apartment very clean. At the very least, this neighborhood is decent. I feel safe in my home, even if it is small and cramped. And my neighbors are respectful, from what I can tell. Not that I really know them all. Know them at all. In fact, the only neighbors I have regular contact with are the very same ones I leech Wi-Fi from. Some middle-aged, divorced guy named Kenji, who lives on the floor below me, and his daughter Momo. Kenji's a decent enough guy. He works overnight, which unfortunately means Momo is left home alone in a lot, a lot of the evenings. Momo's a sweet girl, perhaps six or seven years old. Occasionally, her singing drift. I hear her singing drift up in my apartment. I hear her, oh, I hear her singing drift. Dr drift up? Is that, is this supposed to be drift into my apartment? It doesn't bother me too much. She's just a kid. It's the very same Kenji and Momo that I bump into when I'm climbing the stairs this evening. Oh, good evening. Hey. You kind of look like that dude at the store but you're not hello hello 
We're just on our way to get some dinner. Isn't that right, Momo? Y yes. That sounds nice. I hope you have a good meal. Thank you. Say, are you feeling okay? You look like you've been in some trouble. There's dirt or something all over that side of your face. I tilt my head and reach a hand to my cheek. Sure enough, dry muck has blended into my makeup and caked over my face. It seems like my eyeliner, eyeliner has smeared as well. Is this from when I fell in the bathroom? Damn it. Have I looked like this all day? Oh, right. I try to make up some lies so Kenji doesn't worry about me. I, uh... <laughs> I actually fell asleep on the train home, and I guess the seats were kind of dirty. Is that so? You should wash your face and do your makeup again. Oh. Help if you like. Oh, you're so nice. I can't help but smile slightly at Momo's generous answer. She has a cat dress! How do I... Look at that dress! That's precious. Thank you, Momo. I'll be sure to wash up and make myself look nice again. You should go have dinner with your dad. The girl nods resolutely. Well, I hope you're okay at any rate. Have you been working hard at the bank? Hardly working. Oh, actually, I just work at the head office for the bank, so... Oh, uh, that's right. Sorry. Data something, right? Oh, look, he's... He's actually kind of interested in our life. That's kind of nice. Yeah, data entry. It's a bit dull, but I'm happy enough. That's good. That's very good. I know it's hard for kids like you to get good work in this economy. When you find a job like that, you really have to hold on to it. When I was your age, I could only find cleaning work. I must have had a dozen different janitorial jobs. Before I met Momo's mother. I blink a couple times. It's not like I talk this guy often. Really, we hardly know each other. Still, I've never heard him actually mention Momo's mother before. Most of the things I know about him, I've just pieced together from context. Mom? Oh no. Of course, things are different now. I have Momo, and her mother isn't around anymore. Uh, Cleaning work doesn't cut at these You're gonna days. make her cry, stop it! I was really lucky to get into security. It means I can work overnight while Momo sleeps, and I can still take her to school every day. Security. Of course, now I remember. He did mention when we first met that he does what he does for a living. If memory serves, he works for a private co security company. I assume he guards corporate offices or parking lots, something like that. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Hold on to a job if you like it. That's very important. Thank you. I'm happy at Temujin, so... What a nice guy! I hope you're a nice guy. Like, a father figure just looking out for me. Very good. Oh, Momo was telling me earlier what she wants to do when she grows up. Weren't you, Momo? Dad? Come on now. Tell Mariko what you want to be. A veterinarian. Um, a scientist. Hell yeah, dude. Do all the science. Oh, a scientist. Build all them rockets. Great job. I'll be rooting for you, Momo. The girl blushes and hides behind her dad. Aww. She's inherited her mother's book smarts, I'm certain. She definitely didn't get her brain from me. Anyway, we're gonna get going. Enjoy your evening, Nariko. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye, Momo. Bye-bye. Bye, Kenji. Oh, what a nice guy. I like him. Why aren't we friends with him? He seems to actually have genuine care. The two of them bow their heads and follow the rest of the stairs down. I continue up the next flight of stairs, reach the landing, then turn the corner to enter my own apartment. The place is dark because I always make sure to cut the lights before I leave. I can't afford to leave my electricity running. My rent chews through most of my salary as it is. I flick on the lights and feel relief as the living room illuminates. My faithful couch and TV emerge from the shadows and I immediately feel at home. After throwing my keys and bag onto the coffee table, I slump down on the couch. What a day. I have an overwhelming urge to pull up my lap out my laptop and check my website for new requests. But my... But my body needs come first. I'm desperate for a hot shower. I'll need to cleanse my face, scrape the paint out from underneath my nails, and I'll definitely have to slip into a fresh set of underwear. Whatever happened in that bathroom today took its toll on my body and my clothes. While the night is young, I can relax later. For now, it's time to start scrubbing. Oop, time skip. The convenience store is a little more crowded than usual. 
mundane chatter of business people, students, and workers buzz, buzzes in the air like a swarm of relentless flies. Throughout the drone of mingled conversations, I happen to catch a few interesting words here and there. Have you seen that one website? Uh-oh. What do you mean by request a death? My lips curl into a half smile, half snarl. Sensei always cheats. I thought I might upload his photo. Oh shit. And you think Corpse Girl really exists? Oh shit, everyone's talking about it. I hear so many people talking about Corpse Girl's website is enough to make my nerves tingle. Did I not check the website last night? However, I know they're not talking about it because of Akane Tsurumaki's death. As far as I can tell, her death wasn't reported to the news as a suspicious case. The only source of information I could locate was her obituary. And that didn't mention anything about foul play, so there's no way anyone could know that Corpse Girl was involved. People are talking about the website in the same way they always have. Like it's just an interesting topic of conversation, an icebreaker, one of those things you tell your friends to entertain them. And there is therein is my issue with the with the website as a topic of conversation. It's just an urban legend, a point of discussion that inevitably fizzles out and is forgotten. People talk about it, people visit the website out of curiosity, but very few take people take action and request the death. That's the part that annoys me. If people don't actively participate, how can I prove myself to the world? How can Corpse Girl claim her victims if there's there are no victims to be claimed? As long as the website is simply a talking point, a myth, an icebreaker, then Corpse Girl's ambitions will remain unfulfilled. To be fair, to be fair, I haven't yet provided a compelling reason for people to take the website seriously. The death toll is humili humiliatingly low. I need to ramp it up and step up my game. For Corpse Girl's sake. Until I manage to do that, people will continue to simply discuss the website in hushed tones, like it's some taboo fantasy that shouldn't be spoken of. But with some more time and some more victims, soon everyone will know to fear Corpse Girl. Thanks to the constant drone in the con convenience store, I barely register the quiet melody of a ringtone. Eventually, my ears become keen enough to pick it up, pick it out, and I answer my phone. Hey, good morning, Noriko. Is this a bad time? Did it say it was Monday? Is she starting today? Not at all. I'm at the convenience store. Oh, good. I wanted to catch you before work. No worries. I actually meant to call you yesterday, but uh, the day got away from me. That's okay. Um, I wanted to ask if you spoke to Shinya yet? I sure did. Guess what? What? You start work on Monday. You'll be doing data entry with me. We might even get to sit near each other. Oh my gosh. Really? Are you telling the truth? Oh. Uh. Of course. When have I ever lied to you? Oh, Noriko. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank I you love her so much. Does this mean I... Oh, fuck you, banana. I am a banana. You're ruining the moment, Lonnie. Yep. Quit today if you can. I've been listening on and off. And whatever is happening is wild. I... Do I know what's happening? I don't know what's happening. Have you seen um, Death Note? That's kind of what's happening. Um, except I run a website and people can submit people to die. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Ali, are you crying? Deserves a banana though. <laughs> I'm just... I love Owie. She's precious and must be protected at all costs. Making Aoi so un overwhelmingly happy feels really good. I care so much for this girl. Her happiness is vital to me. I owe you so much. And Shinya too. I know. I'll buy him a gift to give him on my first day. Do you think he'll like that? Yeah, I'm sure he will. That's a great idea, Aoi. Oh... Uh... If Tomoe does something to Aoi, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. If she if she freaks out because Aoi gets him a gift as a thank you thing, and then says, Noriko, you brought your own friend in here to seduce my man. But, 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 but fuck first off, you guys can't see my finger. First off, not your man. Second off, fuck you! There's a thank you gift. God damn it. What does he like? Fine chocolate. I managed to spill the answer to that without having to think twice. Crime novels. Oh yeah. Or that. 
Death Note, E Death. Yeah, E Death Note. Oh, really? Oh, his dad is a detective, right? Okay, I can get something like that. Right now, I'm going to march into the cafe and quit. Oh, something's gonna happen to her. I know something's gonna happen to her. Something's gonna happen to her. Oh, oh something's gonna happen to her. Because she's so excited. So what do you do? You make people... S s their heart parts feel so happy. Because they're living vicariously and seeing someone so full of joy and genuine happiness. And they're gonna rip it out from us by murdering her or something. Or making something bad happen. I hate this. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> Good luck, kid. Okay. Bye, Noriko. The call ends and I smile. Aoi sounds so happy. I'm really glad that I could help her out. Yes, yeah, now they're just rubbing it in. She deserves to be happy. I barely have time to select a can of coffee from the line of refrigerated shelves before my phone rings again. Huh? Aoi? Uh, sorry to call again, Noriko. I just... Um, something was bugging me. Um, what's up? Did I... Um, this is going to sound stupid. Did I... Say Look how nice she is! Fuck! Oh, yeah, you did. A few times, I think. Okay, phew. I just wanted to check. It was I hate this game. And I didn't want to come off as ungrateful, so... She's so kind! Um, you know what? Just to make sure. Thank you, Noriko. She's so kind and thoughtful. Okay, I'm going now, really. Bye -bye. Something's gonna happen, and I'm gonna be very upset. Bye, Aoi. The call ends in my brow furrows. That was strange, but maybe not so strange for Aoi. I guess she really wanted to be polite. <gasps> Dude, if fucking Tomoe requests Aoi gets killed, I'm gonna fucking lose my bananas. Ah, I'm a banana. That was on total purpose. By the way, totally, totally on purpose. The call ends in my brow furrows. That was strange, but no, maybe not so strange for Owie. I guess she really wanted to be polite. I shrug it off and return to selecting my coffee for the day. Well, I said that earlier if she's the murderer. And that was my thought. But it slowly transitioned to be either she's going to be turned into the murderer or she's going to find out that Noriko is corpse girl and then is going to have um, a worship kind of a relationship with her where uh, she reveres her a little too much and then maybe carries out the murders or something like that. But if something happens to her, I'm going to be very upset. The office atmosphere is unusually somber when I exit the elevator. There are a few people around. There are fewer people around than normal. Some executives I rarely see on this level are hovering around in one of the glass screen cubicles to one side of the floor. I spy Shin Shinya standing at his desk, talking quietly on the phone. He's nodding and bowing a lot, despite the fact that whoever is on the other end of the call can't see him. I want to ask somebody what's going on, but nobody seems to notice me arriving. I shuffle my way to my desk and sit down. I spend some time looking over a spreadsheet of today's tasks. After going through it thoroughly, Shinya arrives in front of my desk, seemingly out of breath. Noriko, has anyone filled you in yet? Is Tomoe dead? No, what's going on? Why is half the office empty? Well, you see... Are we all getting laid off? Somebody that's in the company died yesterday. Oh. Oh? Somebody we know? Shinya shakes his head slowly, his expression gravely serious. Nobody you would have interacted with. She was oh the shit! Up on the twenty-first floor. Apparently, she never showed up yesterday, but her coworkers just assumed she was taking oh, a shit. personal day. People started getting the news in the afternoon. She was involved in some sort of accident, and now she's dead. She didn't glares at me. His narrow pupils seemingly accusing me of being tactless. Yes. Dead. So, I mean, I get it's a tragedy and all, but. How does this explain where everyone is today? You should have received an email sent out by HR this morning. 
basically everyone is being offered professional grief counseling. Okay. Seriously? I think some people are taking up the offer, but I suspect some other employees are using the opportunity to skip out on work. They're totally building up, building up Owie to die. Because now, because why would, I mean, story-wise, why would this, like, why would they offer personal grief counseling for everyone in the entire building when probably 80% of the people have no idea who that person is? It's because they're setting up in the story. That Owie's gonna die. And she's gonna consider going to grief counseling. Fuck! Regardless, what happened to Miss Suramaki was a tragedy. So unexpected. I blink a few times, getting ready to turn back to my computer. Miss Suramaki. Wait, what was her name? Huh? Miss Suramaki. It should be in the email. She had a young daughter and everything. Oh boy. Akane Suramake. Although I've never met her before, her first her face appears in my mind with starting clear, startling clarity. self asphyxiation An accident. She worked here? That's creepy. I can scarcely believe it. It's true that this is a massive company with thousands of employees Japan wide, but still. For her to work in the same building as me. It's too coincidental. It doesn't feel right. Would I have gone through with killing her if I knew she worked in my building? This scenario creates more, question, creates more questions than answers. The person that requested her death, do they also work here? It would have to be somebody who knows her well enough to want her dead. Odds are high that they work here as well. You okay? I realize I've been spacing out and I turn back to Shinya. Yeah, sorry. Just thinking is all. Well, grief affects us all in different ways. I think. The details for the counseling sessions are in the email. Be sure to take up the company's offer if you think it'll help. As for me, I think I'll be okay. Some quiet reflection on the matter should help clear my head. Sure, okay. Plus, I have a date with Tomoe to look forward to. It's important to look ahead in times like these, isn't it? I think I read that somewhere. Probably one of your crime novels. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what they say. Very well then. Do your best today, okay? Right. Shinya takes his leave and I let my shoulders slump. I killed someone from my office building, but I didn't know at that at the time. Could my involvement be traced? No. I was careful to cover my tracks. I deleted the photos from my computer. That doesn't fucking matter! Deleted stuff can still be recovered from hard drives. Discarded the burner's phone SIM card and trashed the phone itself. There's no way anyone will find out I was involved. They can also check your fucking IPs! Oh. That's a problem. That's like anyone. Like, if something happens up on a show and it's someone's specialty or their actual job, you can't help but point out. It's like, that's not... That doesn't happen. That's not true. That doesn't work that way. Sorry, that's what's happening right now. Besides, I don't even know if authorities are treating the case as a murder. As far as, as, far as general information goes, it would seem like it is truly being treated as an accident. I'm in the clear. I know I am. However, I sure would like to uncover the identity of the person who requested Suramaki's death. The thought that it could be someone I work with makes me way too curious. A bear grew wings. Despite work being eventful this morning, the rest of the day passed quietly. Even Tome kept her distance from me. I wonder if I scared her off when I casually mentioned reporting her to the police. Not that I actually would report her. That would lead to the police getting mixed up in my life, and I can't really have that considering my moonlighting occupation. Especially now that I know I have a connection to Tsurumaki. I brush my hair in front of the mirror in my bedroom. I remove my makeup and reveal the ever-so-faint bruise on my cheek, a fading token of my fight with Tomoe. Since the night is rather cold, I decide to snuggle up under the covers in bed with my laptop. I crawl into bed and push the plush blankets up over myself. The warmth and softness is immediately comforting, and I have to fight the urge not to fall asleep here and now keep myself awake. I check the requests on my website. I'm pleasantly surprised there are two new requests. Two in one day. My heart begins to race and I quickly open the messages. The first message reads. Image attachment not found. Oh, throw it out. No image attachment? What? I thought I configured the website to reject requests unless an image is attached. 
This is really irritating. I hope I got my hopes up for nothing. It takes me a second to remember that there's another request waiting. My optimism renewed. I hurriedly click on the unread message. Yes, this request has been submitted correctly. The image is loading before my eyes. No! That's Kenji! The new victim is male. Early 20s. He's fit and athletic looking. His clothing is casual, so it's impossible to infer what kind of work he does. The photo of him is pretty simple. I don't know if he uses it for his noise profile or it's an ID photo of some sort. Either way, he looks like a happy person. I'm not so naive to pretend I can't guess it at the reasons this guy is wanted dead. Perhaps an ex has submitted his details after a bad breakup, or a jealous sibling wants him out of the picture. People's motivations are purely selfish. Requesting the death of somebody is guaranteed to be motivated by self-interest. So why did somebody want Kuramaki dead? She was so plain looking, so uninteresting. She didn't look like she was capable of even thinking about wrongdoing someone. Have you not put together this Kenji yet? Did someone want revenge on her? Maybe it's not Kenji. It looks like him. Or did someone simply find her so dull that the thought of removing her from the planet seemed appealing? I interrupt my own thoughts and return to the task at hand. Dwelling on a past victim won't do me any good if I want to continue my streak of success. This new guy is attractive. It's almost a shame to have to chop him up. Well, we all get what's coming to us. No sense in trying to avoid scar scarring a pretty face. Beauty is superficial anyway. I know that as well as anyone. No one deserves to be spared just because they're good looking. Beautiful people, beautiful people should suffer as much as anyone else. Beautiful people do suffer, suffer as much as anyone else. Take Aoi, for example. She's gorgeous, absolutely stunning, and definitely my type. But she suffers endlessly at the hands of cruel stalkers and patrons. Everyone suffers. Beautiful or not, we all cop, we all cop the crap we're dealt. So why fuss over a beautiful corpse? This guy, or Aoi, or even Tomoe on a good day, Beautiful people die the same way as the average person. The guy on my computer screen probably doesn't really deserve to die. I'm sure there's some petty reason for his death that has been requested. But I take all requests seriously. I won't turn a single one down. Corpse girl's convictions will pave the way to her fame. See? Hey, all that build up with Owie and the doubling down on the I won't turn down a single one. She doubled down on it. Aoi is guaranteed to be requested to die. And I'm guessing it's going to be Tomoe. And then we're going to kill Tomoe. And then that's where we get the body for Emmy. With a smirk and a look at my lips, I get to work. I've got a nice clear photo here, so I can go out all out on the, on the request. I hit up the DD, the database of the deceased, and spend some time selecting a suitable base image. I hesitate between choosing an image of a corpse with a knife in its throat or a body soaking in a bloody bathtub with its wrist slit. Either image would do just fine, but I really want something special, 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 special for this latest, for this latest victim. After all, I've taught my last success, right? Another five or ten minutes pass until I gasp at coming across the perfect photo. Thanks to my clever use of tags and filters on the DD, this image matches my victim's description perfectly. 20 to 30 years old, authentic, uh, athletic build, male. The corpse's legs are severed below the knees. Bloody stumps leak their vital fluids from on high. The body is hanging from a set of power lines on some suburban street. Also, the tags were slightly changed, but not really. It's perfect. Beautiful, even. It will help me create a beautiful death for a beautiful person. I kind of have to question the story behind this photo. I wonder if the police ever investigated and discovered what happened to this sucker. Well... Regardless, this will serve my purpose. I download the highest resolution copy available and save it to my hard drive. My fingers trace along the computer's trackpad and practice with practice movements, clicking, tapping, dragging at random intervals. The night carries on. Alright. Uh, Alright, I can't move with the thing. Okay, I need to end here because... It's 9.55. And, uh... That, that's like the start of a next day. So I think that's where we're going to end it. Oh, man. This game is a bit more heavier. A bit more heavier? Bit me... bit more heavy? I can... I don't fucking know. I, I need to... I forgot I didn't... 
I meant to do some more overlay stuff this weekend, but I didn't get the chance. Um, anyways, my friends, uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Um, mayhaps we can go for a raid. What do you guys think? You guys think we can go for a raid? Is, is Moira still streaming? Moira, Moira was building, uh, the Lego tall neck. Uh, yo, let's go, Will. Oh, yo. All right. So this guy, super cool dude, he has a pity. His name is Wagnus. We're gonna go raid Re Wagnus. I think he's just starting. He usually has a, a ton of followers, uh, or viewers. Um, um, but I think he's just starting right now, so I won't feel so awkward uh, raiding him. But he seems like, a whoa, whoa, my uh, the raid, the raid thing is all jacked up. Um, anyways, um, so let's go raid Wagnus. He's a super cool dude, super chill, um, fun to relax with. He's got, uh, he's playing, looks like he's going to be playing, um, Cult of the Lamb. He's got the extension enabled and he has a pity and he also has channel points where, uh, he can give love to the doggo. So, uh, let's go do that. And, um, he does fosters. He does foster. And I think that's how he got his girl. Um, yeah, he's a humane society employee. And uh, he, he found her. She was a, a abandoned uh, pregnant pit bull. And they ended up adopting her. So let's go give him some love. Go say hi. I don't know. Whatever. You guys know how it works. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Hope you guys had fun. Remember to spay new to your pets. Adopt old shop. Donate to rescue if you can afford it. Or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. That is a very rewarding experience. And helps those animals and rescue out. They're very much need. Anyways, I'm Vasive. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for letting me be your streamer tonight. I heavily appreciate it. And I'll catch you all next time. See ya. Jada. Jada, you hungry? I know it's bedtime. Let's go get some food.